Attention, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just a quick announcement on the house rules before the session commences. Well, kindly be informed that your microphones are muted throughout the session. And if you have any questions, you may use the q and chat box, which is located at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Well, towards the end of this webinar, we will flash out a QR code for you to provide your valuable feedback. And we Attention, truly appreciate and that all of you uh, could respond a quick to it. So we're gonna start the house shortly, yeah? before the session commences. Well, kindly be informed that your microphones are muted throughout the session. And if you Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. A very warm welcome to all to our webinar. Well, the topic of discussion today is on COVID-19 and the role of Islamic social finance for the community. Well, Alhamdulillah, today we have a total of 100 participants tuning into this webinar. So thank you very much for your time. With us today, we have our distinguished moderator, Ustaz Mamak Kamal Mokhtar, and the panelists consist of the chairman and the members of Sharia Committee, Maybank Islamic, Associate Professor Dr. Aznan Al Hassan, Dr. Akhtar Zaiti Abdul Aziz, and Dr. Azrul Azlan Iskandar Mirza. As a start to fill this session with blessings and barakah, we would like to invite Ustaz Usama for the du'a recital. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Hamda yuafi na'mahu wa yukafi. I'm sorry, I guess there's some interruption there. Are you there, Ustaz Usama? Can you me proceed, Ustaz Usama? I guess there was some network uh, problem just now. Can you just repeat again? Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Hamda yuafi na'mahu wa yukafi'u mazidah. Ya Rabbana, laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika al-kareem wa azim sultani. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Ya Allah, ya Rahman, ya Rahim. All sublimities are for you at every incline, and all praises are for you at all times under all condition. Allahumma ja'al jam'ana hadha jam'an marhuma wa tafarruqana min ba'dihi tafarruqan ma'suma wa la taj'alillahumma fina wa la ma'ana wa la man yatba'una shaqiyya wa la matrudan wa la mahruma Ya Allah, please make our gathering today a blessed one and our embarkation ah. after this gathering an embarkation which is blissful and protected from any harm Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min jahdil bala wa daraki shaqa wa su'il qada wa shamatati al-a'da Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min al-baras wal-junun wal-juzam 
ومن سيء الأسقام ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفر يا رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين Amin, 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 ya Rabbal Alamin. Thank you, Ustaz Osama. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to invite Encik No Sharizan Sulaiman, the Deputy CEO of Maybank Islamic and Head Group Islamic International for the opening remarks. Encik No Sharizan, please. Thank you, Soleha. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. And a very good morning, respected members of uh, Sharia Committee, our distinguished panelists and moderator, Associate Professor Dr. Aznan Hassan, Dr. Zaiti Abdul Aziz, Dr. Azla Azlan Iskandar Mirza, Ustaz Muhammad Kamal Mokhtar, regulators, industry players, academicians, and fellow colleagues from Maybank. It is my utmost pleasure to welcome all of you to this webinar organized by Maybank Islamic Rahat this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, today's webinar is part of Maybank Islamic's initiative for our Sharia community members to share their knowledge particularly with those in the field of Islamic banking and finance. And it is hope intended that today's webinar entitled COVID-19 and the role of Islamic social finance for the community will enlighten us on how Islamic social finance can support and facilitate the country and the world's economic development and recovery during these tough and challenging times. For this webinar, we are truly honored to have and feature scholars like Dr. Aznan, Dr. Zeti, Dr. Azro, who are not only experts in Islamic finance, Islamic economies and Sharia jurisprudence, but also accomplished thought leaders as well. I'm confident that the discussion would benefit all of us and would help us uh, to understand and appreciate Islamic social finance better, inshallah. As we all know, 2020 has been like no other. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected not just the banking industry, but a host of other economic sectors. And of course, humanity in general, on a global scale that is. Billions of people around the world have suffered massive damage to their capacity to earn a living. Children are deprived of going to schools, of proper learning, and not to mention the loss of human life. The gravity of this impact is unprecedented. Acknowledging the need to come up with sustainable solutions that offer social benefits on top of the economic benefits into the mainstream, today we would like to position Islamic social finance as a tool to alleviate hardship and provide relief to the community during these challenging times, inshallah. Ladies and gentlemen, humanizing financial services is not just a mere tagline, but a mission, a powerful mission embodied in our DNA to strive for the betterment of society, placing the well being of people at the heart of our business, driving positive changes, and promoting sustainable growth for every facet of the communities that we serve. On that note, we believe that our commitment towards offering better value propositions to our customers and communities are in line and echo Bank Nagara's aspiration for the Islamic finance industry to promote and drive value-based intermediation and the global call for sustainable development goals. These attributes are also aligned to the objectives of Sharia or Mahasila Sharia in protecting the five essential attributes, which are life, religion, family, intellect and wealth. Now, such themes such as Islamic social finance, financial inclusion, risk sharing, humanitarian efforts and technological opportunities are among the initiatives that we want to pivot upon moving forward. We are indeed blessed in Malaysia as our regulators have set forward looking regulatory changes to spur the growth of the Islamic banking sector and heighten its contribution to the real economy. We will remain steadfast to focus on delivering more value to the society at large without neglecting our role as a responsible Islamic finance institution, inshallah. Lastly, on behalf of Maybank Islamic, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you for your participation in this webinar today. I'm hopeful that the outcome of this session shall have a positive impact in igniting new ideas, especially on the prospects of Islamic social finance. May Allah the Almighty guide us and bless our efforts in contributing to a more holistic development of Islamic banking and finance as a catalyst for the preservation and evolution of humanity 
overall. Inshallah. With that, I thank you. Thank you very much, Encik Nosharizan. Well, moving on before we start off with the panel discussion, allow me to share the background of our moderator, Ustam Ahmad Kamal Mokhtar. Well, he graduated from the National University of Singapore with a bachelor degree in zoology and botany. He then obtained his diploma in Arabic language from Islamic University of Medina, Saudi Arabia. Proceeded in faculty of Hadith and graduated with bachelor's degree in Hadith and Islamic studies. Additionally, he graduated from Sharia Advisory Training Program, jointly conducted by Singapore Islamic Scholars and Religious Teachers Association and International Institute of Islamic Finance. While he also holds a Master of Science in Finance from the International University of Malaysia. And apart from being a member of the Sharia Committee of Maybank Islamic, Ustaz Muhammad Kamal is also a Sharia Advisor and Research Analyst at Shape Financial Corporation and a Sharia Committee member of Basel Fund, a private real estate investment fund based in Singapore. And he is also currently serving as an associate member of the Singapore Council of Fatwa. SubhanAllah, well, there you go. <laughs> now, without further delay, Ustaz Muhammad Kamal, the Zoom is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Sister Saliha, for that uh, great introduction. Uh, very good morning to all. I'm Muhammad Kamal Mukhtar, one of the Sharia Committee members of Maybank Islamic. I will be moderating this whole session, and I'm honored to be with our panelists who will be speaking throughout this webinar. Uh, before we start our session, I would like to share a pantun, if you may. Uh, Tuan Panglima masuk istana menghadap raja yang adil saksama Wabak Covid melanda seluruh dunia Pengajarannya kita ambil bersama So let me introduce first our distinguished panelists for today uh, We have Dr. Aznan Hassan A very well known, established and well respected Sharia scholar He is a member of Board of Directors Maybank Islamic Non-Independent Non-Executive Director and Chairman of Sharia Committee Members Maybank Islamic. He also sits in various Sharia board locally as well as internationally. Next, we have Dr. Akhtar Zaiti Abdul Aziz. We call her Dr. Zaiti. She is Sharia Committee Member Maybank Islamic and also Assistant Professor, Department of Fiqh and Usul Fiqh, International Islamic University of Malaysia, IIUM. And recently, she was included in the 300 most influential women in Islamic business and finance. Congratulations, Dr. Zeti. Last but not least, we have Dr. Azrul Azlan Iskandar Mirza, a very young up and coming Sharia scholar. Besides being a member of the Sharia Committee of Maybank Islamic, he is also senior lecturer, Faculty of Economics and Mu'amalat, University Science Islam Malaysia. He also in, is involved in other Sharia board as well as Fatwa councils. So dear participants, as we go along this seminar, you may ask any questions in the question and answer chat board. Uh, you may state the name of the speaker to whom you have directed the question. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is an overview of the whole webinar. We will be discussing about COVID-19 itself. Then we will establish how Muslims should view this pandemic from Sharia perspective. After that discussion, um, we shall explore what solutions or tools are available to unite the community and ensure resiliency of our economic well-being so we can still carry on our duties serving God and humanity. Lastly, there will also be a session that we will showcase what our bank, Maybank Islamic, has done for the community to combat this pandemic. We will have two rounds of discussions. Each panelist will be asked to discuss about a specific topic. Once that is done, we shall proceed with a question and answer session, followed by a short wrap up by each of the panelists. So to start off uh, our discussion, 
we have Dr. Azrul, as previously mentioned by our MC, Sister Soleha, and our Deputy CEO, Encik Shah. The pandemic is causing several hardships, not just financially, but economically to individuals and businesses in Malaysia. Some business sectors which are worse affected are agricultural and services. Globally, we see that many lives of our loved ones are lost. As a shadow committee member of the Islamic financial industry, Dr. Azrul, what is your opinion on this? Can you provide an overview of this whole pandemic as Mukadima introduction for the participants? So please, Dr. Azrul. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you, Sas Kamal. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And very good morning. Uh, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin uh, Bihi nasta'inu ala umri dunia wa din Salatan wa salaman daimaini ala rasulina al-karim Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Our Deputy CEO Encik Shah Dr. Aznan and Dr. Kazeti uh, Sister Soleh, our MC uh, Ladies and gentlemen, our participants for this webinar uh, Thank you, Mabing Islamic, for organizing this event I would say it's honored for me to discuss this topic that I would hope also to get some inputs from everybody here and create more added value to our organization and society. Back to the question just now by Sas Kamal, yes, I would agree that and even everybody is agrees that the COVID-19 is considered as unprecedented event. Nobody expect that. Uh, it happened once in actually 2002-2004, we name it as a SARS, but we are quite fortunate since uh, no cases reported worldwide during that time. Uh, because it's mostly happened in China and Hong Kong. Hong Kong, a few other countries, only 8,000 people in infected, but uh, the fatality rate or the mortality rate uh, during that time was 11%, which is much higher than the COVID-19 mortality rate that stands around 3% uh, of the infected, infected patients. So to compare between the SARS and the COVID, I think the, the spread of COVID is worldwide, almost 70 million of people infected, 1.6 million died, and until now the solution is still unclear. Even the vaccine has already been produced, but I believe still no clear indication it is proven. And even it is proven, uh, it also take time to produce in uh, to produce in mass, to distribute, to manage the storage. And I believe the price is very expensive and could hurt the poor people to get the access to the vaccine. So I still believe that a long journey to go, but what was happened was very miserable. The, the, the virus has limited our movement. Either we prevent uh, ourselves to go outside uh, at, or the government has made the movement uh, restriction to us. By the end, it slows the economic cycles. A lot of businesses affected, losing their sales. The business could not sustain and therefore it has to shut down. So consequently, the employee was losing their jobs. More than 800,000, I believe, laid off. It is not included those, those who are not in the list of the registered employee. Some of the employees to cut their salary, giving unpaid leave. Then those are losing jobs and into, into other jobs that compete with others. For example, the food riders, for example, uh, when these people is losing the, their job, they become the, 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 the what we call uh, food panda riders and to compete with, this, with the existing and the current, current riders of the food panda. So just uh, what we call it, uh, taking something from the same cake. Uh, so it would, I would say it's very tough. And as I mentioned, it is not the situations that uh, we expect. Yes, we do have the uh, ASEAN financial crisis in 97, 98. We have the subprime crisis in 2008, 2009, all related to the financial and economic factors. Uh, we can react as fast as possible to improve and getting out of it. And even the analysts already predict the economic slowdown since last year taking into consideration the trade war issues. We have the issue related to the oil price, but I believe no one ever imagined the factor behind it, behind the economic problem that we face now is the virus or the health issue. So the effect of COVID is uh, no, no more comparable to what we have in the previous cases, but uh, we compare this pandemic effect with the Great Depression 1929, but for me, it is still early to compare since the Great Depression uh, reached the bottom after 42 months. But the trend probably looks similar, but we hope it is not. And the people also comparing the COVID with the Spanish flu in 1990, 1918, 
infected some 500 million persons or about one third of the total population during that time and kill everywhere from 50 to 100 millions of people. So still far away from what is happening today, but we hope we can get out of this as soon as possible. By all means, uh, it is time for us to reflect actually uh, what we have done to the world. Do we cross the limit as the humankind? Are we really good enough in managing our life and, and our world? Because we as a Muslim, especially the Muslim believe in the verse of uh, Surah ar rum verse 41, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, Zuhar al-fasad fil barri wal bahri bima kasabat aydin nas liyuziqahum ba'da allazi amilu la'allahum yarji'un uh, Allah said the evil sins, disobedience of Allah has appeared on the land and sea because of what the hands of men have earned by operations and evil deeds that Allah may take them, uh, taste a part of which they have done in order that they may return by repenting Allah and begging his pardon. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, remind us that what was happened actually is coming from ourselves, our hand. Do not put the blame on others. Uh, repositions ourselves as what been directed to us. We are required to manage and administer this world with fair justice, kindness. Do not take the others' wealth. Do not kill people in unlawful manners. Protect our dignity, humanity, trust, relationship in a good manner so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us ways out of the problem that we have. So back to the, the, the effect of this pand pandemic, yes, it is appear that this pandemic has led to the dramatic loss of human life worldwide and present unprecedented challenge to the public health, food system, in the world of work, uh, the economy and social disruptions caused by the pandemic is devastating. Tens of millions of people are at risk of falling into the extreme poverty. Yeah. So millions of enterprises also face an existential threat. Uh, nearly half of the world, 3.3 billion world global workforce are at risk of losing their livelihoods. Informal economy workers are particularly vulnerable because the majority lack of social protections and access to quality health and have lost the access to the productive assets. So without the means to earn income during the lockdowns, many are in, unable to feed themselves and their family. And for most, no income be no income means no food or at best uh, less food and less nu nutritious food. Uh, that's one perspective. In, 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 a so in the social perspective, uh, most of the education institutions is also closed. Uh, it could lead into the knowledge gap for the students, even though the government has introduced the online classes, but only the, the, the one who have the facility and, 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 and the devices will, de will, will benefit from it, while the remaining still left behind. And this could also lead into the social problems. We have the drug, probably the dark drugs problem, alcoholics, and therefore damaging the social institutions such as uh, family issues, divorces cases, mental health, psychology, psychiatrists, emotional, a lot of things actually uh, will be the consequences of this pandemic. Seriously, I'm, I'm afraid uh, that this pandemic will give up uh, the life of the human and doing something beyond the limit as a human. Uh, for the sake of surviving, they, they are willing to involve illegal, uh, unlawful, non-Sharia compliant actions uh, like maybe prostitution, selling drugs in the name of surviving. So I believe this is time for us uh, the, to mutually help our community, not only depending on the government, they have the limits in terms of giving assistance, but other agencies, NGOs, individuals should position themselves uh, to help the community. So in this hard time, we should sacrifice our ones and to help others and to ensure the people protected in terms of their basic needs. Of course, from the business perspective, yeah, uh, we have two types of business. We have the SMEs and corporate, both need assistance. So SMEs nature needs more assistance since normally they, they, are, they are not prepared. They have lack of savings. There's no contingency plan and really difficult to retain their employees. And even they have problem of access uh, to the financing. So, but for corporate, most of them are impacted, but uh, they have more options to do. They have room for restructuring. They have the access for financing, except for the certain industry like airline, tourism, hospitality. They are the most impacted. Just take a look at the A Asia. They they are still suffering. Uh, their, 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 their impact are huge. And just imagine their workers, 20,000 of them in A Asia and 3,000 of them in Asia, in A Asia X. 
Anyway, uh, the, this is the, the role of the financial institution, especially the Islamic financial institution, because the primary role of the Islamic, uh, the, the, the financial institution itself actually to provide the liquidity to the economy and permit the higher level of economic activity that would otherwise be possible. So specific rules of the financial institution, we know we have three. The first is offering credit, or, or we call it financing, uh, managing the markets and pulling risk among the consumers. And if we take a look at this and relate it to the, 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 the GDP, so the investment portions actually is heavily influenced by the financial institution as they facilitate how much people save and invest in economy which is an ingredient for the economic growth. So without the financial institutions, I believe there will be no savings of money that could lead into the slow economic growth. Uh, and at the same time, of course, a financial institution needs to offer more commodity product, particularly in Islamic social finance, such as Waqaf Zakat, that uh, could not be offered by conventional institutions. Only the Islamic financial institution could offer this kind of product. So for me, it is time uh, for Islamic financial institutions to go further in depth uh, to offer the products more related to Islamic social finance. I think that, that will be the Mukaddimah, Ustaz Kamal. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Dr. Zurul. A very good uh, introduction about the, the overview of uh, COVID-19 that is affecting globally. Uh, and I agree that there's still a lot of work to do, uh, even though we have the vaccine and still we have problems with regards to the effects of vaccine towards the certain individuals. And also uh, things that, uh, and, and what uh, you have said, that all things that happen in this world is what has been, is due to the hands of human. Okay, and, and inshallah, we hope that uh, this, we, we can tie over this uh, pandemic, inshallah. So next round, uh, we have Dr. Zeti. Uh, from what we understand from Dr. Azrul, this pandemic has indeed changed human lives socially and economically, regardless of your race, religion, and nationality. So for us, especially those in Southeast Asian regions, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, and Brunei, we should keep our minds open and ensure that we as Muslims can carry on our lives in sustaining ourselves and carrying out our worship to God. So please, Dr. Zeti, can you enlighten us on how the Muslim community should view COVID-19 from the light of Al-Quran and As-Sunnah or even from the majority of Muslim scholars around the world? So please, Dr. Zeti. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you very much, uh, Ustaz Kamal. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraqin abiyya bin salim wa ala ala yasir wa sahbihi ajma'in. Uh, we have uh, seen that it is a known fact that uh, COVID-19, as uh, explained by Dr. Azrul, has actually impacted almost everybody and in all aspects of life. So the question now is how we Muslims uh, should react to these uh, global, uh, global issues which has affected in uh, all areas and work of life. Uh, Allah said in the Quran, مَا فَرَضْنَا فِي الْكِتَابِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ we do not left anything in the kitab, in the Quran, in Sunnah, anything. Everything has been, uh, I mean, guidance will be found in the Quran and Sunnah in whatever situations, be it in normal situation or in a critical emergency question, uh, situation like a pandemic and uh, 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 any issues uh, affecting human life. To begin with, I want to look into uh, this issue of this guidance from the Quran and Sunnah in few perspectives. The first one is from the perspective of uh, that Quran and Sunnah has actually enacted laws uh, in all situations. It will it, it is suitable for application in all situations. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, if you look into the uh, guidance you know, from the Quran Sunnah as uh, also the Kawa and al Fiqhiyah, which already discussed by the scholars since more than 1,400 years ago, uh, we will find that uh, in the Quran and Sunnah in the Ahkam itself, the Quran enacted not only for Rukhsah on any uh, other issues which has been enacted uh, uh, initially or in, in normal situation, but also together with Rukhsah, also we have the, uh, together with Azima, we have also the Rukhsah huh? or how to react uh, or how to uh, enact uh, laws in 
abnormal situations, uh, in the exceptional situations. So it is actually embedded in the hukum itself that once we have the rukhsah and we, we have the azimah, we have also the rukhsah. The other kaidah is that uh, uh, which has been enacted to uh, face these particular situations is, uh, for example, ad-darurat wal hajat, the compelling situation, which for sometimes uh, subject to some regulations, it can be. Uh, some of the rulings can be relaxed yeah, in order to cater for the uh, circumstances. So that is, uh, our, for example, in the in the Sunnah itself, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "La darar wa la dirar." Uh, there is no uh, uh, the the darar or the uh, the harm should be avoided in all situations. So that I uh, mean to say, the point is that it has been embedded actually in the rulings of the Sharia. Uh, from within, uh, inherence in the Sharia rulings in Quran and Sunnah, we will look into in terms of the rulings of the Sharia itself. The second point I want to look, want to look into this issue from the perspective of Makasid the Sharia or the uh, higher objectives of the Sharia. Meaning to say that what are the objectives of these laws? What are the why Allah has says that this is haram? This is uh, this is uh, permissible, for example, what is the purpose behind? So it has been uh, concluded that looking from the uh, individual um, uh, ayat of the Quran and the Sunnah, that uh, can be uh, concluded that uh, the, the higher objective of the Sharia is uh, actually five protection of the five aspects of human life. So in all situations, whether in the normal situation or in, in the case of pandemic like this, this will be guided by the maqasid of the Sharia. As we look into our uh, uh, what we are discussing today, Islamic social finance, we can be fit easily into the protection of the mal, protection of the wealth, uh, whereby the financial inclusion is one of the objectives of the Sharia in the uh, protection of mal or the protection of the wealth. Right, so that is the second point that I want to highlight from the Sharia perspective. The third point is that the concept of uh, uh, to be relevant and to be helpful to others, which also it is a uh, uh, an uh, embedded uh, principles in the Sharia, whereby the Prophet says that uh, if kulukum uh, wa kulukum masul an everybody has a responsibility, and one not if it is this kind of uh, situation, uh, the responsibilities of everybody is expected. The, the uh, response from everybody is respected and not to consider that this is others issue, not our issue, no. So it has to be, uh, we, we need to be relevant. Uh, another, in another hadith, uh, the Prophet said that, uh, that it is not a, a believing Muslim, uh, 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 those who sleep uh, with a full stomach, knowing that his neighbors is starving. Right? So this is uh, actually uh, a principle which can be applied in all situations whereby we take the issues are surrounding us as part of our issue to become relevant relevant in all issues, uh, in all situations. Right? And in other hadith, the Prophet said, uh, The best among you is the most beneficial among you. The Prophet didn't say the, the best among you is the richest among you or the, the most powerful uh, among you, no. Uh, uh, given that, uh, of course, if you have the wealth and you have the power, it is easier for you to become beneficial to others. But it's not intended in itself. Uh, but being beneficial is the best value, uh, or best quality of a human being. So that is the principle of uh, uh, being relevant and being beneficial to others. The next point uh, from the guidance from the Sharia that I can highlight here is the concept of ta'awun. Wa ta'awanu anal birri wa taqwa. Right? So uh, in, in facing this kind of reality, we cannot, uh, you cannot uh, work in, uh, I mean, uh, uh, in solo. Uh, we, we, cannot, we cannot work uh, individually, right? But we need to, to come together uh, so that the, the, the impact that we, we are going to offer to the society will be uh, covering everybody and in a uh, uh, very impactful manner. Right? If we relate to our uh, to our situation in case of the uh, Islamic social finance, I think, if uh, we can uh, have a joint effort uh, between the banks, for example, in order to pro offer uh, protection in terms of the, of the financing uh, or offering of some social financing, if we work together, we can provide more compared to if we only uh, work in, uh, I mean, uh, in individual, individual banks without uh, having a kind of joint effort. 
and uh, uh, of, of collective measures uh, among the Islamic banks to counter this issue. So I think that are the principles that uh, it is actually part and parcel of the Islamic teachings, uh, which is really uh, uh, taken from the many Quranic ayah and many hadiths, which actually govern the uh, uh, life of the Muslims and in facing any situations, be it in the normal circumstances or like pand pandemic like this. So I think uh, to, to uh, uh, wrap up what has been uh, discussed before, uh, we can we, we need to take that this pandemic is actually a test from Allah, right? Uh, everybody has been tested. Human has been tested. Humanity also has been tested. We are also individual, at individual level or at the institutional level also we tested uh, as a parent, as a teacher, uh, as a Islamic banks also. We, we, this is actually a kind of test and wake up call actually we should take that way uh, to look back into what is actually our functions, especially as an Islamic banks. Uh, so uh, everything happened with hikmah. Uh, so uh, I think as a Muslim, we should take. We have already seen many hikmah behind actually uh, in uh, behind what's happening uh, world, uh, globally, right? Uh, so uh, this is uh, what we as Muslims should view uh, that it is a kind of test that we have to overcome this with a strong taqwa to Allah. Uh, Allah said, "Kulla yusibana illa ma kataballahu lana." Maulana. So uh, with that, uh, I thank you very much uh, as a, uh, for, for this opportunity. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Zeti. A very, uh, very full of information within a short period of 10 minutes. So you have mentioned about the reactions uh, by Muslims towards this uh, pandemic. And also that the Quran and Sunnah give solutions to all us uh, or all problems, as well as you have mentioned about the the matters of Rukhsa and Azima, uh, using all the principles, using the tools and instruments in Islam to solve problems, as well as the the instrument, uh, the, the the fundamentals and the, the understanding of darurat and and hajat, as well as you have mentioned about the maqasid Sharia. Wow. When when I, I heard you speak, oh you, you have already you mentioned so many so many principles in just a short period of time, and especially when you mentioned about the responsibility of everyone about the uh, own to to assist one another to to ride over this this pandemic. So thank you very much, Dr Zeti, for that uh, insightful uh, 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 talk and presentation. So now we have uh, Dr Aznan. Uh, as you can see, Dr. Aznan, uh, Dr. Azrul provided an overview, overview of this whole pandemic, while Dr. Zeti gave insights on how Muslims should view this pandemic positively from Sharia perspective. So moving on, we see that the banking industry is evolving to promote financial inclusion, so no one gets left behind. Islamic banks are also embarking on Islamic social finance, but this concept is not new. Some of the tools of Islamic social finance are wakaf and zakah. So Dr. Aznan, please share with us how these two tools, especially wakaf and zakah, can be very instrumental, not just in Malaysia, but to other countries to alleviate the economic hardship faced by many people today. So please, Dr. Aznan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعه وصره وله سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي تنكو برماش في سأل كمال دي أبنالي سوطة أكتازيتي سوطة أزرول أو ديبوتي سي أو جئشة شانا منجمن باتسيبن تنكو برماش في having me uh, today for this uh, very important discussion on the COVID-19 and the role of Islamic social finance for the community. Uh, there is no specific uh, definition on what is social finance. If we study, I wrote a paper on uh, so Islamic social finance, social finance. What I uh, discovered, there is no specific definition of what is social finance. There are at least three or four definitions on social finance, but it's centered into one thing, which is 
is uh, social finance is activities or the financial activities which aims does not uh, the intention is not solely for 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 monetary point of view but there are other aspect of uh, social and society that come into the picture when the financing is considered so it can have a lot of instrument it can be charity in nature it can be financing in nature but the main purpose of this social finance the intention is not only for the profit again on loan when it come to islamic finance we have to understand islamic finance is society based and social based in nature the purpose of uh, islamic finance is basically by right it should be beneficial to everyone including also those people who are in the, the category of the needy and and the poor and so forth and so on daily people are talking about islamic social finance people are talking about some instrument of islamic social finance as if they are new instrument they are not new if we study the history of islam zakat wakaf sedekah would there as uh, as anchor for islamic society if we remember during the time of sayna umar bin abdul aziz remember how he used zakat as an instrument to alleviate the poor even if you refer to sirah imam ibn abdul aziz uh, uh, ibn al-jauzi ibn al-jauzi he mentioned about one thing during the time of umar bin abdul aziz how he used zakat to to alleviate the poor in fact it come to a situation where they said that people will just go to the street went to the street to pay work to pay zakat nobody dare to accept zakat qad aghna nas umar the oman make people rich for that particular thing that is the zakat uh, what we call the the role of zakat if we study wakaf for example you can see the the wakaf role is was very huge during islamic uh, history i mean during the osmanic uh, for example osmanic time for example osmania time they said that that is the third sector financing where more than half of the financing budget of the country were done by zak by wakaf for that matter so that is the big uh, what we call preposition on zakat and wakaf that we have unfortunately when we talk about islamic finance we spoke we forgot previously we used to forgot about to forget about these very two important tools if you combine together zakat wakaf sedekah microfinance for example these are the main four instrument when we talk about islamic social finance you can see that if we really combine and synergize between these four important uh, in ingredient of islamic social finance we can see a lot of thing that can be done to help people and to benefit people so what zakat and wakaf can do as you all know zakat is a compulsory charity tools in islamic finance uh, is something compulsory uniqueness of zakat is that it come in two prong it come as ibadat it come also as economic effect that is the beauty of zakat so zakat is ibadah if we study uh, on rukun islam for example one of the thing is to give zakat but zakat we forget zakat as economic tools because to to embed in our mind zakat is ibadah zakat is ibadah zakat is ibadah we we'll forget about the importance of wakaf as one a very strong and powerful economic tools this is what i believe islamic finance islamic banking and finance need to emphasize more on the use of wakaf and zakat let me give some of the uh, what zakat and wakaf can do in this situation of pandemics okay then i give some point uh, i try to be within the time on my my own point of view how for us to move further with with zakat in term of how we can use zakat and wakaf for the purpose of benefiting the situation in if you look at penjana you look at uh, what we call uh, prihatin the government has put the economic transformation uh, transformation for this particular period for three things the first one they said for protecting and empowering people to protect and empower people the second one is to propel business the third one is to stimulate the economy if you look back at these three main pillar zakat and wakaf fit very well to this particular three in instrument for example we talking about protecting and empowering people that is the purpose of zakat to protect the people in fact 
the Allah Subhanahu wa taala mention specific beneficiaries for the wakaf why because the intention of wakaf is not to be used for just anything is the intention is to benefit and to protect people who are in needs and who are vulnerable that we mention about poor people we mention about uh, those who are in debtedness in 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 in, in debt those who are uh, in at poverty or those who, who, who who want to free themselves from slavery and all those things why this come to the picture the intention is to protect people now we have we are in the situation in which protection of the people is the most important thing that we need to emphasize on we need to provide food to people we need to provide works to people how many people in this particular situation starving outside there so zakat can play a very important role for that uh how for us to protect the work the, the the job of the people zakat can do that very very well uh then we talk about propelling business how can we use zakat first of smes for example how for us to help people who lost their job how us for us to to help people who want to start doing their business again all those can be used zakat and wakaf money for that matter and stimulating of the economies of course that is one of the purpose of wakaf and zakat to to prosper the economy if we study the history of islam how wakaf was one of the main instrument of financing society they call it instrument of financing society what social finance more than that is about a financial tool to finance society in turkey they estimate that one time one time there were more 70 universities not 17 eh? 70 universities financed by wakaf alone financed by wakaf even now i was in in turkey last last before the pandemic so we i mean they brought they brought me to one of i don't remember the university in that university the whole university was funded by 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 wakaf you know if you publish one article you got rewarded if you publish three article in the year you get uh for that month a bonus of one of your salary one month bonus salary for example so that's how wakaf play a very important role in terms of financing the society and elevating the so uh, the, the people in hardship and so forth and so on okay that is in general i want to put some of my comment if i still have time is that i want to put some of my thought on how wakaf and zakat may be considered more than just about the normal two that we can see perhaps it's quite controversial sometimes I hope that you can listen to me and we can discuss about that. The first one is in this time of covid. Okay, government, society, majlis agama, I mean religious council and all those people, we need a lot of fun. F U N D, not F U N. We need a lot of fun. Okay, we need a lot of fun. The normal the normal collection of zakat may not be enough. in the fuqaha discussion they have one title they call ta'jil ikhraj az-zakah ta'jil ikhraj az-zakah accelerating the payment of zakah means that you in 2020 you are in 2020 for example but you can pay your zakat for next year to come you can pay your zakat for next year to come in um, uh, in in in, in shab in school of law we said you can pay in two years to come to certain uh, you can you can accelerate your two years zakat to be paid so you can consider that from next year zakat in other school of law hanafi for example as said by al alqasani in bada is unlimited so i think uh, government uh, religious council need to take this opportunity to encourage people to pay zakat more and the government in my opinion should allow for this zakat to be calculated for next year so we allow for the calculation for next year for them to pay zakat now so they can get, just get the same rebate like what they normally get but they accelerate the payment for this year so we can get the more money for the payment of of zakat for the people okay um in chafin school of law they allow for two years uh the major, the majority opinion of the shafi there are some opinion of the shafi is allowed for unlimited years like hanafi for that matter i think we should look we should look from that particular angle on how for us to use zakat as one of to accelerate the payment of zakat for the purpose of of that thing that the first one the second one is that 
how for us to widen the definition of fisabilillah fisabilillah should be widened now we have to look at the definition to cover a lot of things to cover the frontliners to cover uh, in fact uh, protection protection of job and so forth and so on so the widening of definition of uh, fisabilillah is very important second one third one uh, this is quite controversial perhaps should we allow for the uh, what we call for the the employers okay, for the employers to consider paying zakat to their employees who are in need do we allow for the employers to use their zakat money to pay for the employees a lot of question come to me on that manner i said we don't have fatwa generally in malaysia for the time being I am so afraid to give fatwa, but I believe we have to be uh, upcoming in giving this kind of guidance for people. Should we allow the employer to pay zakat for it? So we can maintain uh, what we can maintain job for that if the company got money to pay zakat. Because zakat is paid on the business, not on the profit. So the company may, may loss, but still have to pay zakat. Why don't we allow them to use that particular money to pay to their workers or to their employee as on wakaf on, on zakat basis? That second one. The first one is definition of al gharimin those who are indebtedness. Should we allow for financial institution or organization, for example, to pay the debt of their own debtors? So say for especially for house financing for example now they cannot pay the house financing for example previously people talk about debt jubilees eh? is you remember about debt jubilees people talking about debt jubilees why don't we try to let, look at it from that angle I mean allow for the financial institution to use uh, their zakat to set off against the payment of debtor in their financial institution it's a very controversial one. We have debated this two times in Middle East. As far as I'm concerned, we have debated two times this in, in, one, in two conferences, one uh, regulators. So a very controversial. We have two sides of the coin. People argue too much on that. In UAE Central Bank, we have decided to allow, provided that we create a fund for that. So all, 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 central, all, all the banks put their, fund into that particular, their money into that particular fund. The fund will be used to pay off the uh, that talk in case of uh, financial needs, for, for example, for the house financing, not for the uh, car luxury thing, but for the uh, what we call house financing. And so people are talking, government are, to, is, are talking about affordable houses. So this kind of thing that we can use for that, perhaps we can use to pay off their 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 ten percent uh, deposit for that. So. Of course, this is quite controversial. In my opinion, we have to open our horizon more now in terms of giving and using the zakat money. Last one, last but not least, uh, is it possible for us, for example, uh, we have debated at Main Bank already on that manner, to use the zakat money for the purpose of giving loan to uh, businesses? So instead of giving out the money, I know in the wal masakin lam here means litamlik to make to take to give ownership without get, having to pay back understand totally understand that but in this current situation looking at Sheikh dr zati talk about uh, uh now can we look from that particular angle it's not a new opinion anyway there are some scholars who promote this opinion that we allow for zakat money to be used as giving loan to the business rather than just give their money giving loan to them for them to create uh, to, to continue the work and they have to pay back again if they are able to pay for that matter make them obliged to pay if they have they, they reach certain threshold and so forth and so on so these are some areas in which i believe with the zakat that we have that we have used so far we can we, we can enhance further the use of zakat for that matter waka for example last one Ustaz, if, I, if i may waka for example why not we try to look at temporary waka, for example? We have people who have houses, for example. How for us to allow them to do temporary waka for their houses? People who have no house, for example, they make temporary waka, allow them to come and sit in a uh, stay in the house for a while till they manage to get back to their works and, and to get back their own life. And, and temporary money as wakaf, temporary cash wakaf, for example. A lot of things that I think we have to view at 
look at it from a bigger point of view, try to look what we can enhance further in terms of the practice of wakaf and zakat in Malaysia. That's in general, start what I believe that if we utilize wakaf and zakat properly within the social, within the ambit of social finance, inshallah, we can help a lot uh, in people, a lot of people to whether through this particular difficult time, this is very, I mean, these two instruments, zakat and wakaf, a very powerful Islamic social finance for the financing of the, uh, society on that matter. Wallahu alam. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Aznan. Uh, you have brought up many controversial issues, and I felt like I mean, a shadow committee meeting uh, attended by Dr. Azro, Dr. Zati, and we are discussing a very controversial matter. But Alhamdulillah. You brought up uh, many, many important aspects uh, on Islamic social finance, which is basically centered on assisting the poor and needy. And it's, it's centered on charity and Islamic uh, finance is funded and is founded on society to assist the society. And, and also you have mentioned that the anchor of Islamic society is actually zakah and wakaf, a very two important tools uh, that we should use. And, and also zakat and wakaf, uh, the two, the two aspects which is ibadah and as an economic tool. Okay, no, mostly, uh, most of us, we focus on zakat as ibadah, compulsory, wakaf, non-compulsory non or non-obligatory. And you give examples on Turkey and you know, how they have utilized the wakaf for establishment of more than 70 uh, universities. And, and also you brought up a few, a few uh, issues that need to be discussed. Uh, discussed by scholars. Uh, firstly, which is ta'jil ikhraj zakah to, to pay zakah in advance. Uh, two years uh, according to Shafi'i's madhab. And also to widen, secondly, to widen the definition of fisabilillah, okay, to, to expand the meaning. And, and thirdly, uh, to, to and, and enable employers to consider paying zakah to their employees, which is, I think, very controversial. We have to discuss about it in detail. Uh, fourth, uh, to, to use the concept of al gharimin Islamic financial institutions to pay debts on debtors on the home financing, and also to give zakat, free to give, uh, use zakat to give loans to businesses. And, and, and lastly, I think you mentioned about using Waka for temporary usage uh, for, the, for, the, for the society. And, and Alhamdulillah, and thank you very much for all these uh, notes and all these points. Uh, it's very, as usual, bring up uh, topics to, to be discussed among scholars. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have completed our first round of discussion. But we still have many things to learn from our distinguished Shara scholars. So I have a few more questions for them. So uh, let's proceed with second round. Uh, we, before we move to question and answer session, again, ladies and gentlemen, you can start typing your question in the chat box. And please do not forget to whom you have directed the question. Okay. And moving on, uh, Dr. Zeti. Okay. Let me pose this question to Dr. Zeti. Your thoughts about how Muslims should view this pandemic is very encouraging. We as Muslims should strive to work hard to improve ourselves and see this pandemic and opportunities to change our way of life to get closer to God. While Dr. Aznan has earlier discussed about wakaf and zakah, there are other areas that we should look into. As the current society now is witnessing a greater gap between rich and poor, we found out that there are two more tools that we can explore. They are sadaqah and microfinance. There are wealthy people who generously donate their monies to the poor and needy. And there are also microfinancing solutions for the poor, especially the B40 and for the micro enterprises. So Dr. Zeti, about Sadaqa and microfinance, how do they work together to combat COVID-19? Please share your views with us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kamal, for this question. So we have listened to uh, Dr. Aznan just now and his few controversial suggestions, so to speak, right? On uh, when, in, in terms of uh, zakat and wakaf. So uh, the, the third uh, principles in Islamic philanthropy is sadaqah, which is actually I think less explored uh, between the society in our nowadays life. So I think if we can, uh, I mean, enhance the sadaqah, 
right? Uh, it can be a perfect tool for the Muslims in order to combat the uh, pandemic in terms of uh, providing the Islamic social finance to the greater number of the people uh, in the society. Right? So in this respect, uh, saraka is actually complement to the zakat and wakaf. Uh, so to speak that uh, basically saraka is uh, the voluntary charity uh, given to the Muslim, unlike zakat, which is uh, compulsory to those who fulfill the requirements, but this uh, sadaqah is uh, voluntary and it is open to everybody, no requirements, no specific uh, amounts uh, is required for sadaqah. So uh, in, in this kind uh, of thing, uh, we, we should view that sadaqah as an element of soul purification, not only soul purification, but also it can be a perfect social, uh, I mean, enhancement a tool uh, in uh, uh, particularly to, to face this uh, uh, particular situation, right? So uh, the element of barakah in sadaqah, right? Being uh, uh, non-compulsory. So the element of barakah in it is uh, actually abundant, right? So the prophet said that uh, the, 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 the uh, property of uh, someone who gives sadaqah will not decrease, but in fact, it will be increased uh, in terms of the barakah. It, it, even though we, uh, I mean, we see well, somebody who give sadaqah, his, uh, his uh, property can be decreased. But in actual fact, that it is actually will increase uh, according to the, uh, I mean, uh, the, the barakah uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and uh, uh, in the Quran, Allah said, Yamhaqullahu riba wa yurbi sadaqat. Right? And Allah has uh, cursed the riba practice and actually uh, put the growth in the practice of sadaqah. So this is also an embedded uh, principle in sharia uh, in terms of giving the sadaqah. So we can view that sadaqah compared to wakaf and zakat, it is quite flexible in a few aspects, right? The first, the, the first one is uh, uh, compared to zakat, it is voluntary in nature, right? So meaning to say that everybody can, can participate in this. There is no, no, no uh, minimum requirement of the property to be given in sadaqah. Uh, even in one ringgit, you can you can uh, contribute in sadaqah, right? And even you can do it every week, every day, in fact, right? So that is the first, uh, I mean, the distinctive feature of a sadaqah. And also, it is also flexible in the sense that um, it is uh, in terms of the recipient, right? In terms of the recipient of the sadaqah, unlike zakah, uh, it is, uh, I mean, uh, 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 for, the, for certain beneficiaries, this is open to everybody, including the non-Muslim, can benefit from the uh, sadaqah, right? Uh, as a uh, beneficiary for the uh, uh, sadaqah uh, fund. Uh, and it also, uh, in terms of the uh, flexibility of, uh, of sadaqah also, if we compare to wakaf, there is no requirement for perpetuity, right? So it can be, uh, it can be in any form, right? It is not required to be, uh, something which can be used for a long time of uh, of of uh, uh, time, or something which is if this even cash wakaf, uh, the fund must be uh, I mean uh, fixed eh? and it, it must be perpetuity in nature. But in sadaqah there is no such requirements. Once it's collected, it can be straight away uh, given to the uh, recipients without any requirements of that uh, that. Uh, uh, the the uh, perpetuity element, right? So uh, I think uh, there is some certain uh, I mean misunderstanding, misconception of sadaqah, whereby people always say that this is not this is not uh, a wakaf, so they are not uh, interested because uh, but wakaf is considered as sadaqah jariah, which is uh, for a long time. But we, we cannot uh, uh, look into this uh, aspect only in terms that only people who can give wakaf, uh, it is, uh, I mean, given the opportunity to contribute. Uh, in sadaqah also, you can contribute and uh, you, have, we, you can have the same uh, reward from Allah because uh, reward of Allah is countless, right? It is not uh, only for those who give in perpetuity and those also who give with sincere heart, it is more uh, valuable in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Sharia. So that is uh, in terms of the uh, concept of sadaqah in Islam. And coming back to the so Islamic social finance, uh, as Dr. Adnan said, that we need to increase the fund. So I think uh, in, apart from zakah and wakaf and all the controversial issues that we have this, uh, Dr. Adnan discussed, these controversies is not, doesn't exist in sadaqah.
right? Then because there is no specific requirements in sadaqah, like in wakaf and zakat. Uh, so uh, I think it can be uh, mobilized more uh, fund to, uh, to, to offer the Islamic social finance from the aspect of sadaqah. I think uh, we as the bank, because we have the existing uh, structure uh, in the, or, or the, uh, the uh, facility that we have, we can use our strength in order to uh, open up more opportunities for the people to contribute sadaqah. I, I know for a fact that many banks, a few banks, my bank included, has uh, already embarked on the social impact deposit, for example, whereby the depositors will contribute some in the form of sadaqah of their return. For example, for the hibah, they can make, uh, make a, a declaration from the beginning from their deposits that in the case of hibah payment, they will uh, donate that to certain fund in order for you to be used for assumption of finance. Maybe in the forms of the, uh, the, the points from the credit cards, some credit cards, uh, they, they can, instead of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, taking some, uh, some, some other, other facility, uh, other, other uh, benefits, they can uh, put the benefit in terms of the monetary form to be contributed to the sum of the finance. So it can be, it can be uh, also uh, for the uh, investment account holders, uh, they can declare part of their returns to be contributed as a data to the specific fund for social impact or some social finance fund uh, to be given to the eligible people. Right? So I think uh, this is a concept of Sarakat and how we as Islamic Bank should uh, I mean, explore more, even though I know that we have already embarked on this, but to, uh, to find ways more to open up the opportunities for a greater number of people to contribute to the Sadaqah uh, in uh, using our existing platform. Uh, the other tools that uh, uh, can contribute uh, extensively to the Islamic social finance is microfinance. So microfinance by definition is uh, um, giving the banking facilities to those who are non-bankable. I mean, originally they are not eligible for normal uh, uh, financing. Right? So that is the, uh, in microfinancing, there are certain elements, for example, uh, in terms of the fund given, it's not like uh, other uh, corporate, uh, for example, uh, financing, and also in terms of the requirements of uh, uh, collateral, also it's not as rigid. The the process or application also is not as rigid as the the other uh, uh, financing, like or like corporate or, SM, uh, or for SMEs, for example. So microfinancing uh, has already been in practice actually uh, in some of the banks in Malaysia. But uh, when we look into the existing uh, microfinance. Uh, it is still within the scope that it is offering to certain segment of the society. Right? For example, uh, the, uh, the, the one who apply for microfinancing need to have a viable business already. I need to prove that he has already a viable business. But looking to the current situation, many people are losing their jobs. As we have known, this is a known fact that uh, some of them also, uh, I mean, having their salary cut, right? Uh, so people uh, come into business not by choice. Okay? So they need to do business for survival. But uh, the question is, uh, they don't have the fund, they don't have the capital, they don't have the expertise, no experience. So this is how we, as an, uh, is, uh, for, uh, from the perspective of microfinance, can help these people. Huh? Just, uh, I mean, in terms that uh, to uh, loosen the requirements for those applying for uh, microfinance, not only for those already having the business, viable business, but those who want to start a business uh, due to this pandemic. So I think uh, 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 this is uh, also uh, how uh, uh, to, to uh, widen the scope of microfinance and look into the situation uh, in order to uh, benefit more people uh, from this. And I think uh, we can have also a specific fund uh, from the Islamic social finance, whereby from Sadaqah just now, for example, the bank also can put their Sadaqah in this, uh, they, uh, put their fund in this specific fund to help those to start their business uh, using this concept of microfinance. Yeah? So Allah will have the barakah for this. Uh, as I said, uh, by giving Sadaqah, uh, the, our, our profit will not be lessened, but inshallah, uh, it can be we can have some kind of baraka and uh, more profit to come due to this. Eh? Uh, so uh, I think that's uh, from me for uh, this time. Thank you very much.
Oh, thank you very much, Dr. Zeti. And uh, just to uh, give a bit of perspective, and Alhamdulillah, you have mentioned that uh, sadaqa and microfinance, especially sadaqa, is a complement to zakah and also wakaf. And yes, I think you have mentioned a very important point that the element of barakah, okay, the element of barakah in sadaqa, which is not necessary financially, and also it is voluntary and can be participated by all and it's very flexible flexible in terms of its implementation and for those paying and the usage of the usage of the fund okay and also sadaqa which is not necessary for perpetuity okay and and i think your suggestion using the investment account and channeling some of the accounts for for sadaqa for the for the holders i think uh, can, can be considered and microfinancing the application for those who need to to expand or to start a viable uh, 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 viable business okay so alhamdulillah thank you very much uh, dr zati uh, next i will ask dr azrul a more challenging question okay this is about application on current context modern society is now using various creative means to do business including trying to solve problems caused by covid-19 for example the use of Islamic social finance can be facilitated by an approach called crowdfunding. Crowdfunding using the technologies such as e-wallet, machine learning, robotic process automation, artificial intelligence, data visualization, blockchain, deep learning, and so on. Although some of these technologies are already applied today, but many of us as laymen are still struggling to familiarize with them, but do they really have potential to harness Islamic social finance. So please explain, Dr. Azrul. Thank you very much, Ustaz Kamal. Uh, actually, I, I believe that in the middle of difficulties lies opportunities. Uh, previously, we do have difficulties in managing the gap between the people and technology. It is not about the people who do not accept the technology because they are the one who invent and create that technology. But to attract the people, we need a bridge. And somehow, I would say that the COVID-19 COVID is the wow factor that can bridge the gap between the people and the technologies. Why? Because prior to COVID, uh, there are still group of people in Malaysia skeptical with the online banking, for example. They always doubt about the securities, they feel insecure and would rather went to post office branches and counter to execute and perform the transactions. But somehow COVID is a blessing, I would say. Uh, it's a post uh, the positive side of COVID. I believe no more question on the security of uh, online banking now, but now the issues among the peoples is about the usefulness, about the ease of use. So I believe this is in line with the technology adoption theory or we call it technology adoptions model, where before the usefulness and the ease of use uh, been discussed, there must be an external factor motivate them to use the technology. Previously, we had to create a campaign uh, to, uh, to give the awareness to attract the use of technology. But now, those people are pressuring us to create more and more applications, websites, and a lot of things uh, using the technology. So the competition among the technology provider now is not more on the price, I believe, but the people are looking into the ease of use, user-friendly, what else, uh, or in a simple word, the more it simplifies, the more people will like it. So not only, I would say not only the online banking, the perceptions, some of the people, especially Muslim down there, still doubt on the Sharia compliance status of e-commerce activity. You buy from Shopee or Lazada, they still consider it is not allowable from Sharia point of view. They say that the e-commerce is prohibited, it is not allowed, it is so-called haram, and this is something to be think about. Uh, we do we do understand that their justification but based on the certain interpretations of the Quranic verse and hadith, but we, we respect that. But now, I believe that the considerations is very minimal, with more discussions on the technicalities rather than fundamentals. Simply to say that, yes, they allow the e-commerce transaction now. They are not discussed about it is haram or halal. It is halal, but now the, the, the people discuss about the technicalities, the conditions of uh, to make sure that the permissibility is totally permissible. So I believe on 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 all uh, because of this COVID and 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 the, the adoptions of technology, 
we we are now very have have a very minimal barrier on the adoptions of technology because of the covid or in other words the covid make them no choice of using the technology and it also the time to the financial institution to introduce more and more products and including the product of islamic social finance because uh, the pressure is on us the people uh, demand more they want something new uh, COVID teach them uh, or make them aware on their future life. They demand something that fulfill their basic needs. They demand something which can guarantee uh, the future. They demand something to uh, something has to be done to protect the, the the next generation. They demand the sustainability of the development. They're already aware the need to collaborate, the need to cooperate. Uh, they're aware on the profit is not the ultimate of objective. Uh, they know the health is important, humanity is important, neighborhood is important. What else? A lot of things, I believe, the new perceptions, the new demand by the people. And now, I believe it is time for the Islamic social finance appear as a new alternative for people, as a complement uh, to the current Islamic commercial products and maximizing the use of technology. Yes, Satskama, you mentioned just now about the, the use of e-wallet. Uh, yes, Maybank is not only introduced e-wallet, but I would say the first Islamic or the Sharia compliant e-wallet with features that convince the Muslim to use it. Actually, I've been appointed uh, by Jakin to conduct research on e-wallet because the Muslim uh, actually is uh, doubt about the permissibility of using the wallet. Perceive they perceive that there is element of riba there. But Alhamdulillah, our Maybank e-wallet managed to avoid such issues thanks to the dedicated people that maximize the effort on this. And we proudly to be the first. Not only them, uh, not only that, the, the, the team currently try to innovate the e-wallet to be more competitive. And I was, I was informed that that could, that could change how people look at the e-wallet. Another point of view, I think a lot of us know that uh, Malaysian government has introduced the Sukuk Prihatin, uh, the retail Sukuk that been used to help the SMEs, to help the government to fight the covid and the target to has 500 million ringgit, but managed to raise, I think, 66 six, six million, if I'm not mistaken. It is fully digital. Application cannot be made over the counter or through the ATM with such, with, uh, such application to be rejected and refunded. This is another way of benefiting the use of current technology. And Sukup Prihatin, I would say, is not a fully investment instrument, but it has the features of donation, sadaqah, the hibah, which is also part of the Islamic social finance product. Uh, I believe it is not enough. Uh, we, we, uh, we have a lot more to do. As mentioned just now by our panelists, one of the features that is trending now is the Wakaf. The people talk about it. Even Minister of Finance even tabled uh, the National Wakaf Master Plan in the 2021 budget and become a national agenda. And let us discuss how the technology will help them uh, to, 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 to execute the, 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 the plan efficiently. Uh, I believe that Wakaf is a noble donation. The most example of Wakaf is the mosque. It is a Wakaf institution that built through the crowdfunding process. Those people uh, that made the Wakaf will be rewarded as long as the mosque used for the prayers and other activities that deemed to be good from Islamic point of view. And the ROI for Wakaf is in the hereafter. But in a way, actually, it has also the economic value. The Muslim with guidance of the scholars already changed the perceptions on Wakaf, not only Wakaf for more cemetery, but uh, can be used for social and even co commercial purposes. And I think the typical Wakaf is more on social, but the commercial is considered new from, 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 from the view of the people. Just imagine, let's say we, we, we develop something. Uh, let's say we develop hotel using the Wakaf fund and try we, we try to calculate uh, how much the economic benefit. Uh, we are not talking about the ROI in the hereafter, just talking about the economic benefit of the Wakaf itself. First, uh, the operator will lease the hotel because you cannot own. So the, the payment will be made to the Wakaf trustee and that money can be used for the social activities to help the needy continuously as long as the lease payment has been made. So the lease can also be used for to buy another property depends on how the benefit of Wakaf to be used in the very beginning. What, what is the uh, economic benefit? What more? Secondly, we can say that the operator will employ the workers, uh, they will get the salary and help to boost the spending in the society that improve the circulations of wealth uh, in the economy. Third one, the value of property will be increased, of course. And even though we cannot sell that property, but we can increase the lease. And of course, we, uh, the, the, the benefit will be, will be more. Uh, what else? Uh, I think a lot of things we can, we can see from the economic point of view, uh, 
uh, what we call it as in economic, we call it as a multiplier effect. And even I believe that the government will benefit from the Wakaf instrument uh, because government has their own limitation and Wakaf could help the government to grow the economy. So this is Wakaf. And even the scholars uh, uh, mentioned that Wakaf should not be limited to the Muslim only. It should be open for all. Uh, open for all and, and in fact the Sharia ruling is very universal except for the worshipping actually all of the Sharia ruling is uh, suitable for uh, the humankind uh, for example we, we talk about riba so riba actually is uh, not only uh, create the equality in the Muslim system no actually it create the inequality in the uh, in the global system, in the in the human system itself, so same goes to Wakaf, same same goes to other concept in the uh, in the Islamic social finance that could help. Uh, this could be the what we call it the the, the factor that we can uh, create more products uh, from the Islamic social finance. But let's talk again. What what is the what is the lack? What is the problem of the Wakaf now? I mean, what's the problem if impl of implementing the Wakaf now? Of course, I think, I believe it is all about the trust. The people nowadays want to know where the money is spent. For the example just now, yes, we are building the hotel. Then the people ask again, how you got the, uh, you got the lease payment, how you spend the lease payment. So, okay, we say that it will be donated to the charity. Then the people will ask again, who, how much you will give them, how many times you will give them, in the form of what? In the money or essential need, if you pay in, in essential needs, what type of essential needs you are giving and how much the price, how to control all of this. I mean, of course, uh, the good things about it is to have the technology to support that. Yes, people now, it's more complicated of, the, of their donation, but I think the, their intention is quite clear, is to dis have the disclosure and the transparency. So this is why I think uh, in the current technology, we have what's so-called as a blockchain, blockchain technology to help the people trace their chain of donations so that the people can satisfy uh, no room for manipulations and therefore it will be efficient. Same goes to zakat. Uh, the people queries also on the distribution of zakat. How much you collect, how much you divide among the asna. Let's say if you give the poor, how we access them, how much we are giving to them, how many people leave, left behind. A lot of questions, right? So I believe the technology will help of those councils, the Islamic council to manage the zakat efficiently, not only uh, on distribution part, I believe the zakat payer, zakat re recipient can be translated into a good data and a rich data and we can analyze using the concept of artificial intelligence, we are using the concept of big data, uh, more to come in the future. Uh, I think what else, one of the problem also that faced by, by our global community is now maybe no one, uh, less people talk about it, is about the funeral poverty. Uh, I think Malaysia is not happened yet uh, because I would say uh, it has happened in, in UK, in European countries, in African countries, they don't have money to manage their funeral. But we are quite fortunate in Malaysia because we have uh, a lot of schemes uh, that, that been provided by the local community. But uh, let's try to take a look at the schemes in, in, in specific, for example, uh, we have the Khairat Fund, I believe in, in the local community, we have the Khairat Fund, we have the funeral benefit that can be received from a lot of channels, various channels actually. Uh, for example, if you subscribe into the scheme, Khairat scheme in, 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 in your local community, we have another way, we have one scheme. If you are being a public servant, public, uh, public servant, actually you are entitled for the funeral benefit. If you are the uh, EPF account holder, you get the benefit of funeral. So actually we have a lot. How? Uh, actually we, we, we can standardize all of this and create one system that, that can, can efficiently manage this one. Uh, because I think from the scheme perspective, the local perspective, for example, we go to the kampung and the villages, they have the scheme for khairat, they have the scheme for funeral, but who will be the underwriter for them? Uh, I think, uh, let's talk about uh, who will be the underwriters. Uh, I believe if, if it is a young community, I believe the fund always in surplus, but with eight and matured com com community, probably five reported death a month, that could shrink the fund and make the fund deficit and they're having a problem in managing this kind of, uh, what we call it, the schemes that they, they have been created. But I think the idea of having the, 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 the Khairat fund from the local perspective, I think is very good. 
and what we can do now. I, I believe this part of Islamic social fi finance, we can talk about the micro takaful on it, and we can do something by using the technology and even Islamic financial institution can play a part and role to help this uh, community to manage actually the Khairat fund, actually the noble part or the real takaful uh, that, 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 that we can see in, in our society. Uh, then I think we have a lot more to discuss about it. Uh, I think a lot of uh, issues that happen down there uh, uh, surrounding the people. And if we can we can go and penetrate one by one, I think we can give the solutions. I think also the Islamic financial institutions can play the role to help the society in this part. So, uh, so Kamal, I believe uh, we have more to explore in this area and believe the technology should be maximized to help the people and community. Back to you, Sats Kamal. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Zro. Uh, so you have mentioned that in every difficulties, there are all these opportunities. So you either see the glass half empty or half full. Okay, looking for positives in difficulties and using technologies for Islamic social finance. And you mentioned about the issue of e-wallet, though many, many people don't understand what is the issue. It's very straightforward, uh, e-wallet. But what are the issues? There are many, uh, many, many Sharia issues. So Alhamdulillah, uh, Maybank have discussed in detail okay, on, on the issue of the, the funds in, in e-wallet. And you mentioned about the usage of Sukuk Prihatin and crowdfunding uh, in mosque building and, and Wakaf. And also an example using hotel. Okay, using hotel uh, and taking benefit from its income as well as capital appreciation. And also, Wakaf is open to all, even, even to non-Muslims, not necessarily just Muslims, and, and transparency uh, in and using big data. Okay, and I think we have not moved into this big data on, on zakat management and also funeral poverty. Uh, maybe we, we overlook this small matter, funeral. Every, every organization have their own schemes. So why not we consolidate and we have one system managing this scheme. So you don't have a repetition of, of funeral management from one body to another. So thank you very much for, for, for that uh, ideas and presentation. So now we will, uh, so ladies and gentlemen, please continue with your question and answer and please direct your question to specific uh, panelists. So now we will reach our final round before we open the floor to, the, to our question and answer session to Dr. Aznan. We want to verify all the things shared by Dr. Azrul and Dr. Zeti uh, about Islamic social finance from a theoretical perspective to how we should view this in light of Sharia and some of the tools we can use to mitigate Islamic social finance. Is there really a case study which we can learn and appreciate the fact that Islamic social finance is the way to go for the Islamic banks, leveraging on latest technology? Can you share what Maybank Islamic has done for the community to combat COVID-19. Also, perhaps you can also advise us what more can be done. So, uh, Dr. Aznan. Uh, thank you very much, Ustad, for the question. It's very wide. I hope I can give some point of a discussion, not point of uh, to, uh, to emphasize my point, but I think we can discuss further on some of the point that I want to put. Uh, I have a lot more controversial point to be framed. But uh, let me reserve for some other discussion later. You know, when you start, uh, when you always, of course, in our life as academician, we need to read, we, have, we need to uh, think, we need to put forward some new, 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 new points, new data to the market, to, to, the, to the society. I think the thinking process always gives us a lot of thinking, a lot of ideas from time to time. It may be controversial sometimes. It may be controversial now and later on be accepted. It, be, it can be something that uh, to some people dangerous, but um, after that people realize that, oh, this is a good thing, what we should think before. Okay, let me put uh, what uh, social finance, uh, what has been done, what has been done by, 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 by organizations by banks and so forth and so on. I will narrow down then to, 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 to Maybank, what has been done in Maybank, not for the purpose of show off, but for the purpose of, to me, example that we can uh, learn and we can uh, discuss further whether that is the best way to do or we can have other ways, which I believe that this is very open market, then, then, then we can do a lot of things. Okay. 
we talk a lot about social finance. We discuss a lot about what social finance can do. Uh, I put some points of how Zakat and Wakaf can do. Uh, Dr. Zeti put on Sadaka and microfinance. Uh, so this kind of, to me, like foods. He like foods. Uh, some people like this food, some people don't like this food, some people like this, uh, like what we call budu, some don't like budu. I mean, put in that manner. So to me, uh, we have a lot of mechanism that we use for social finance purposes. Okay. If we feel that we like wakaf because it is perpetual in nature, uh, we don't want to give more to sadaqah, we want to give more to zakat, be it. But understand, please understand this. It doesn't mean that wakaf is all time better than other instruments. Okay? Even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one time said that wak- uh, qar loan is much better than sadaqah. Because what? Because sometimes you, you give sadaqah someone, that person may not so much be in needs. But someone would not ask for money for loan unless he is very much in need of the money. So in that situation, give money to him is much more recommendable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather than give sedekah to those who need money but not that in dire needs of that money. So we have sometimes people always look at the wakaf, oh, this wakaf is prolonged, then your, your, your sadaqah jariah will continue forever, but sadaqah is one time. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his generosity don't, doesn't look in that manner. So what is beneficial more to human and you give with your all full heartedly, your, your ikhlas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you more. Doesn't mean that you give $10 is better than those who give $1,000. $1,000 with all the feeling of riya and everything mean nothing in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So small money, big money, it depends on how you, what you have and how you give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of people. Coming back to the social finance point of view, I think wakaf, zakat, sedekah, microfinance is a lot of things that we can learn. And microfinance, Islamic, sorry, Islamic social finance can help in a lot of things. One of the things is that, say, for example, we can use microfinance for, I mentioned just now about job retention and job creation. We have to look at it from that particular point of view. Now, if we give them food, of course, some people, they need food. But if give them food, they eat once and that's it, gone. But if we give them job, and we retain their job. We create more job. With the job that they have, they, own, they don't only feed themselves, they also feed people under them and also people surrounding them. So priority is very important. Job retention and job creation is one of the elements that we need to look into, especially from Wakaf point of view. Okay, from Wakaf point of view. I always mention about one situation of debate that we have. This is a real case. In one place, uh, we debated along using the wakaf ma- zakat money. Okay, I was invited to that particular discussion. This uh, country is a very much Hanafican Han- Han- country. <coughs> Sorry, very much Hanafi country. So they are more toward distributing directly. So we come up with an, uh, uh, a suggestion that rather than feed the poor with the money, why don't we build factory? So we employ the poor to work in the factory. So instead of giving them one off, we employ them using the wakaf zakat money, we build factory, we employ them to work in the factory. So every month they get their salary. They get the salary. So they can feed themselves every month based on their own work. Of course, not everybody can work, but, but those who can work, we give them work, so they work. And also what they work, they produce bread quality bread, so we sell again to the poor people the quality bread at a very low discount price. So they benefit more on that manner. So job retention and job creation is one of very important things that we have to look into that. The zakat and wakaf money, I believe from time to time, we have to uh, put certain, we set a certain amount for that particular purpose. Banks has to change as well. Now, People always complain about bank. We are not dealing with non-bankable people at all. We are only deal with those with collateral, rich people. I think the time has come for the bank to be looking into a wider spectrum of society. How for them to do that? 
I mean, we can set aside some of our profit for the purpose of wakaf. In Maybank, that was what we did with zakat, uh, with, with wakaf uh, perak, for example. Some of the return that we get from our money, we match one to one with the wakaf. But again, because it is much fun one to one, because we don't get much, many people put in their money for wakaf, so the money generating from the profit from Maybank to be put there is also less. I think the bank has to change their mind. We have to understand, yes, I don't deny banks are profit-making organization. No doubt about that. Anybody who say that a bank should be charitable organization, please go to other places. Bank is about profit-making organization. But we can do other things than that. We can do a lot of just making money. We can help people, which I believe will bring us more in terms of return for that matter. Dr. Zaiti mentioned about barakah. This one word that you don't find in any economic books. The word barakah you don't find anywhere in the world, in any economic words, economic books. You don't find in any banking definition the word barakah. But as a Muslim, we believe a lot about barakah in our life. And barakah comes in so many ways. Okay? So that's what bank have to do. The second one is enhancing food securities. Our society, like it or not, we have a lot of people that need food securities. I believe zakat and wakaf and instrument of social finance, be it sedekah, be it uh, microfinance, can be enhanced toward food securities. When we talk about Muslim SMEs, for example, how for us to be able to create the, the supply chain? We always complain that uh, our Muslim society rely on other people a lot. But have we thought about supply chain? The supply chain is the most important thing. Talking about food industry, for example, I work a little bit on food industry. You can see the supply chain were not, uh, were not controlled by us. We can't do anything. So food, zakat, wakaf, sedekah, and everything should also be looking at food uh, securities, not only by giving money or by, by, by giving food to the people, but also creating work in terms of creating the supply chain for that. Health issues. Now with the COVID-19, we have a lot of health issues that we have to look into. Uh, how for us to ensure that, say for example, the Takaful company, how for us to allow the Takaful company to set aside some of their wakaf and zakat money, for example, the one that they need to pay for the purpose of creating zakat fund or for the purpose of Takaful for the needy people. So now it has a lot of sectors health issues. So what I'm trying to put here now is that don't be in the box in our thinking in using our wakaf and zakat money anymore. It's not about just th th uh, thinking outside the box. Perhaps one people said thinking without the box anymore. So no box to discuss anymore. We have to open our mind. And the only guidance that we have is Quran and Sunnah. We look from that particular angle. I mean, sometimes I myself, sometimes we quite, quite, I believe we are constrained by the writing of the juries. Okay, the writing of the juries. So anything that has not been said by the previous jury, or have you found anywhere in the book of a kitab or whatever, sometimes we are so confined. We have to understand any ruling of the juries previously can be divided into two. The first one is when they explain the principle. That one is important. Second one is about their application of their time. When it comes to the application of their time, it may be, rest, may be suitable for their time, but not for our time anymore, okay? Talking about Qaba, talking about uh, Dr. Ado, talk about Vintech and so forth and so on. A lot of things has changed. So now, in our utilization of zakat and wakaf money, Sheikh Bahia, Sheikh Abdullah Bahia said one time, you know, the most flexible Islamic financial instrument is wakaf. Because if you, if you can consider all the hadith, all the adillah about wakaf, they are very limited. It is intended for. Why? Because the wakaf meant to be flexible. The only thing is that when we are so confined, the Jews, when they talk about wakaf ruining their time, we have to understand their surrounding as well. For example, Imam Nawawi talking about wakaf. He mentioned one, uh, sorry, in, in uh, Al-Kalikasani, Al 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 uh, in, in his book, when he talked about wakaf, he doesn't allow for istibdal at all. We have to understand the situation of his time. 
Why? Because that particular time there was a lot misuse of wakaf money for that matter. So he disallowed, not because of something is not a lot at all, but because of the environment that we have for that particular time. One of the Hanafi scholars said, لا يقضي في أموال الوقف إلا قاد الجنة. A mufti, a, a qadi should not deal with wakaf issue except قاد الجنة. A mufti, a, a, a qadi which is in paradise. Why? Because at that particular time, there are a lot of qadis who are actually ruling on the uh, on the wakaf for the purpose of benefiting themselves or people surrounding them. So now we have to open our mind in dealing with that. Uh, banking for health. I mentioned about the health already. Affordable houses. In my bank, we try to do that in terms of uh, uh, providing or in terms of putting a, a structure for affordable houses. Uh, a lot of the thing that we try to do for that matter. So these are some of the things that we need to look into into providing and protecting health of people. Businesses, for example, SMEs. How for us to help the SMEs? I mentioned just now about using zakat money as cut. How for us to open more for SMEs? Not only SMEs that are bankable, but also SMEs which are not bankable at all. How for us to be able to reach to them? How for us to be able to set aside some of our profit for the purpose of this particularly on, on sedeka, on wakaf, whatsoever. But the intention is that this money is to be used for the purpose of financing them. We can generate some return if the money is our money we set aside as our, as our compassion fund, we call it. Call it whatever you want. But it be used to finance the dumb bankable people. We charge them as usual using Tawaru whatsoever. But at the end of the day, the rate will be different. The structure will be different. The, the, in case of the decline, not able to pay because of situation of time, because of economy whatsoever, we, we waive them and so forth and so on. A lot of other things. While we we'll make money, we also do a lot of things to help people. That is in general what we can do to help the society that are in, 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 in difficulties. Talking from what Maybank has done, uh, again, I, I hope that don't take it as uh, a chairman of the Shana committee talking about Maybank here. It's very simple, in my opinion, it's a humble uh, initiative that we try to do to help people in this particular uh, situation, difficulties. I believe there are some other banks who would do better than us. But it's kind of what we call in Sharia and Nasiha, advice from one Muslim to another. So I can see that what we do can be divided into a lot of uh, initiative. The first one is what I call uh, a direct protection initiative. So we do, we give food, for example, uh, we give uh, asnaf in Kedah, we give asnaf in region, for example. Uh, that is to protect life. We give food, for example. And health, for example, we provide PPEs, uh, necessary equipment to frontliners, health workers. Question, can we use zakat money to pay uh, kind of token to them? Even though they are not rich, for example, they are, they are not poor, they are, they, are, they are not poor, but can we use that zakat money to pay them under the category of Isabilillah, for example? The way we treat the student, for example, even though they are rich, if they are feasibility under the learning situation, then we can still get feasibility for that. Can we treat them as feasibility? Feasibility jihad, the purpose is to protect life. And these people, what they are doing? Nothing but protecting life. Can, can we look at it from that big angle? Don't, don't, don't punish me by putting this point of, of view to people to, 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 to study on that. I mean, just put everything to throw everything on the, on the table for our discussion for that. We also provide some assistance for education, for example, for people to, to I mean, for, for the generation to study. Uh, we, put, we also disperse money to the program Perumahan Rakyat, uh, PPR, for example, the refugees, the stateless, uh, the people with disabilities, that's in terms of helping them. So we have uh, either uh, protecting of life, we have for the both affordable houses, we have also for job creation and job protection. We also have programs for, uh, for, for, for Waka, for example, one-to-one -one with the contribution in Perak, for example. We have also uh, a thing that, say, for example, Dr. Zeti mentioned about the a social deposit, for example, I believe this social deposit should be bigger. We should make it well known to the public how 
we put this particular account for them to contribute for the purpose of helping others. We should create those who want to pay zakat can pay zakat. Those who want to do sedekah can do zakah. Do one those who want to do khutbah Hassan even. Why don't we create a fund for khutbah Hassan? Tax should be able to give some incentive for those who give khutbah Hassan. Instead of I give sedekah, I give khutbah Hassan. I loan to you money, for example, to the Majid Agama, to bank, for example. But you give me back within certain period of time, and the bank and Majid Agama can use the money for the purpose of financing. So kind of pay back the the amount only. Khutbah Hassan. So these all things, I think we have to really put our mind together to think outside the box in terms of sort of the box in terms of what we can do in social finance to go beyond just normal zakat and wakaf. Okay, so so these are the things which we have done in main bank, which I believe we can do more on that particular thing. Khutbah Hassan fund, for example. Khutbah Hassan fund that we always understand is that the bank give money for Khutbah Hassan to be used. Why not we create Khutbah Hassan for the people to contribute? We put the supply chain, we put all those fintech, all those uh, blockchain and everything. So people can trace, Dr. Azura mentioned about the blockchain for that. So people can trace the amount that they give for the bank to manage what they call crowdfunding, whatsoever. So they can trace how the money is used, how the money is paid back. And we give them a certain period of time for us to pay back the amount to them. So this creativity, I believe, need to be, need to be uh, discussed further and put forward for, our, for us to understand and try to implement for us to look at Islamic social finance. I believe if we manage to do that, we're able to convince people to do that. People will look at Islamic finance not only, or Islamic banks, not only as profit-making organization, but profit-making organization with social finance, with uh, social benefit, with society taking care of, and a lot of other things, which at the end of the day, people will look at the beauty of Islamic manner Islamic finance in a bigger role and a bigger perspective. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Asnan. And I think uh, very apt, you started off with your analogy that all these tools, instrument, walk-up, zakat, microfinancing, all these are actually like food. So you mentioned like budu. Unfortunately, I don't eat much budu. Maybe cempeda or cencaluk, maybe. All right, and uh, and also uh, the contribution is based on the effort and intention of uh, individuals, not necessarily the, the quantum. And you you have mentioned that microfinance is basically about job creation and retention, and uh, and also you have given us a very good example about building a, a work of using building a factory, okay, and selling off some of the product for for the for the for the poor and needy. And you have mentioned some some innovative ideas. I think you have mentioned about food securities. Every every countries are talking about food securities, and about the supply chain. Uh, you you talk about health issues. Uh, takaful companies giving takaful for the for the poor, and and you 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 said that you have already. We need to throw the box, not 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 uh, to discuss out of the box. We with no box thinking with no box. Okay and. And about uh, fickle market, okay. Basically, uh, understanding what the juries are talking about, uh, the tax and the context. So understand the tax, which is based on the on the principles of Sharia, and the context that means talking about the time, okay. And how uh, the opinions of juries we, we need to understand on that time. It is based on their context and the situations of that time, which which is different from us. And uh, I think you have also uh, came, uh, you introduced a very important aspect, which is using Kordul Hassan. Kordul Hassan, I think this is a very good, uh, very good idea. Kordul Hassan banks utilizing and promoting Kordul Hassan from from pop, from the public to utilize for certain uh, certain usage, inshallah. So okay, thank you very much for all those ideas. And now we will go into. Uh, question and answer session and we have received many questions from participants so we will we have one uh, the first question and this first question will be directed to dr azrul okay so the question is what are the innov in innovative instruments that could be developed in the array of islamic finance for making it useful for muslims and non muslims economy to fight COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, do you need to, Dr. Azul, do you need me to uh, read back read again the question? 
Understood. Is that only one question? Uh, one question, one question. So uh, you have about five minutes, five minutes or so to, to answer this question. Thank you very yeah, much. I think we believe that we need some innovations in, in, in creating any products related and we can do the strategic brainstorming, for example, uh, let us de determine the gaps. What's the gaps that we have uh, in, in, in promoting and, and creating a new instruments, a new product in the market? I think one of, uh, I think when we talk about Islamic social finance, I think the most important discussion is about the inequality. The people talk about the Gini coefficients, the, the, the gap between the rich and the poor. So from this gap, actually, we can use any instruments that we have. For example, we have the zakat. I think zakat, uh, the purpose of zakat is to, to, is to reduce the inequality between the rich and the poor. So we can maximize the instruments of zakat. And then we can combine and collaborate with other respective uh, councils that or the authorities that manage zakat. I think the problem that we have now actually is the collaborations and how we con can consolidate and, and, and put into one system. Yes, I think in Malaysia, we do have the problems in terms of, uh, I think, jurisdictions because uh, zakat and wakaf is under the jurisdictions of states while uh, the, the initiative taken by Islamic financial institution, for example, actually is coming uh, is, is under the federal territory. So to have the 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 the, the, the co collaboration is is another thing. So uh, this is one of the gap that we need to 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 bridge between uh, the, the the authorities, between the the, the system that we have, uh, the the strength that we have, and then by having this kind of collaborations, I believe we can enhance more. Uh, good and uh, innovative product out of it. If we still uh, maintain in, in, in discussing the, the, the differences, so I think in the future, we, we are difficult to have the something that we can put uh, ourselves in one standard. I think that should be the answers. Uh, and then uh, what are the gaps? Uh, let, let, let us determine the gap. Uh, maybe the, the issues of the distributions, for example, the lagging effect, eh? because somehow, uh, for example, we want to develop the wakaf. The problem, uh, not the problem, I would say the challenge of the wakaf actually is the lagging effect. We want to build a factory, as mentioned by the Tazna just now. But how much time we want to develop because we need it now. So we must have the short-term plan. We must have the long-term plan because of that. So we need to strategize all of this. Don't, don't do it by our, ourselves. And then the positioning is not true and that, that will show the inefficiency of the system. Uh, what else the problem that we have? We have the perceptions of the public regarding the Islamic social finance. The people doesn't trust and even doesn't understand. They cannot compare what is zakat, what is uh, what is the difference between zakat and and what is between uh, the zakat and wakaf. And some of the people say, hey, wakaf is is that compulsory? So I think we, we have something to, to 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 think about how to create the awareness among the people, so that when we 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 talk in the same language, I think we can move forward. Uh, and then from there, we can see an innovative instrument that we can develop for that purpose. I think that we could be uh, the simple answer from Sat Kamal. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Azul. Uh, second question, it is directed to Dr. Zeti. Okay, the question is, how Islamic banking finance has differentiated itself to provide more unique services than the conventional? Dr. Zeti, please. Thank you very much, the uh, Kaman. Uh, in the uh, situation or in the current uh, structure in Malaysia, we having having the uh, both systems side by side, parallel system, conventional and uh, Islamic. This kind of question is always, uh, I mean, uh, posed to us how we should be different from the conventional, and it is a fair question. Uh, even though we cannot, I mean, in all aspects, be different because we are in the same in the same uh, industry. Right? For example, uh, we do not we cannot expect that Islamic banks to lower down the profit, uh, for example, uh, because uh, we also as Islamic bank uh, subject to the same uh, legal system, subject to the same uh, cost of fund, for example. So if we expect uh, the Islamic bank to lower down the profit in all cases, that is not a, so a viable solution, actually. It is all, we, we should also look into the sustainability of the banking system or Islamic banking system in Malaysia. So uh, uh, in terms of that, uh, I think what we can do and what we should promote ourselves to be, uh, I mean, outstanding niche area in our, in, in, in our uh, segment of the service, is to enhance our Islamic social finance. In terms of, uh, Dr. Dr. Aznan uh, just now has already 
uh, explain about how this can be done. Dr. Azro also talking about the ways how it should be done uh, in terms of using the technology. But the point is to enhance our, uh, our Islamic social finance and to give the, uh, to the, the benefits or the extra benefit to the, the, the people who are eligible to is uh, mean to say to give help to selective segment of the society, not everybody, everybody because the impact is different, uh, differently to the different people and different segment of the, uh, the people. If you expect to lower the, uh, the, the profit for everybody, that will be very uh, detrimental to the Islamic Bank and its development. So I think we need to leverage more on our uh, Islamic social finance in all uh, I mean channels, like Dr. Aznan said just now. Uh, I think another aspect to look into is that uh, in terms of the uh, CSR, if the conventional, they are proud with their CSR, maybe we can uh, have a new branding for our, uh, for our Islamic bankings uh, so that we focus more as our niche area, as our branding, uh, focus on the Islamic social finance instead of CSR. I mean, maybe this subject to the I mean, the same incentives given to the SS, SRR should be given also to those banks who, 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 who uh, I mean, uh, do more in the Islamic social finance. So this is one aspect. So if we, within this uh, Islamic social finance that uh, Dr. Azan also has highlighted, what we can different, be different is to offer Qadul Hassan, especially for the microfinance, because this will never be found in, uh, in uh, conventional. This is uh, our, our, uh, make uh, our features, uh, which also even before, we uh, cannot think of uh, offering uh, products on, on, on Hassan basis. But now, by having the social finance, uh, Islamic social finance, we should uh, explore more on this and give uh, Qadr Hassan to those eligible people, to those uh, eligible segments uh, of, the, uh, of the people, of the, of the society. So uh, I think uh, by having this, we could, uh, I mean, uh, stand up more uh, compared to conventional uh, and uh, uh, to be different from them. Uh, I think uh, another aspect is to, uh, because so far uh, many things has been done actually, even before the uh, pandemic and what more after the pandemic uh, by uh, having this, uh, this uh, Islamic social finance. But uh, I think what lacking now is the study, the empirical study, what is actually the impact so far uh, from the Islamic social finance, right? Maybe we can have a kind of study and publish that study. So how many people, for example, in society has already benefited from the Islamic social finance? Not for the sake of uh, boosting ourselves, uh, not for the sake of showing off, but for the sake of encouraging people um, so that people can, can see that from 10 ringgit that I give, oh, who are, how many people has already benefited from that? And we, that will encourage more and more to come and contribute in whatever ways. So I think uh, that is my response to the question. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zeti. And I uh, I have the last question. And Alhamdulillah, this question is directed to Dr. Aznan. So each of our panelists have, have a question each. And for Dr. Aznan, uh, why Islamic banking just focus on zakat and wakaf only in efforts to play the role of Islamic social finance? So maybe you can elaborate on this. Thank you. Uh, it's not true, actually. Uh, we have not, uh, I mean, Islamic Bank are not focusing only that. Uh, perhaps it may be understood in that manner, but not only Wakaf and Zakat as they are what we have emphasized on. I mentioned just now about Sadaqah, about Qadur Hassan, but I think uh, it was, first, it was not so well implemented. I mean, it's still piecemeally implemented. We have to synergize, we have to uh, make it more robust in terms of the system, in terms of how for us to monitor, how for us to reach the public. Uh, that one thing. Uh, so it's not true if we say that we are only focusing on, 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 on zakat and wakaf. So that is the what we call low-hanging fruits. The other things that it need time for us to uh, familiarize on that. I believe moving forward, Islamic Bank should just, we should go beyond just being a normal banking as per conventional situation. Of course, they, are, they will continue to do the banking because that is their core business. So you don't expect Islamic Bank to become a charitable body, brothers. It won't work because bank is a bank. You go to Kedai Mama, you want to eat Aoti Chanai, it will not come free. 
Okay, you have to pay for that. But this does not deny the fact that that mama may give some roti canai free for those in needs. But for you who are not in needs, you don't expect the mama to give you a discounted roti canai. You have to pay like the normal roti canai place. The same goes to Islamic bank. I mean, try to make an analogy for that, easy analogy. I hope it's, that does not uh, offend anybody for that matter. So the same goes to Islamic bank. You come to the bank, you asking for financing. The bank will give you the normal financing. And we charge you the normal charge that you have to pay for other people as well. Because this is what business activities do for that matter. But what we need to do more now is that when we talk about social finance, when we talk about other aspects that the Islamic bank needs to do, we may need to do beyond just banking. Okay, For those who are in need, for those who cannot afford, for those who have uh, difficulties, then the compassion of Islamic bank should be more than conventional. In fact, if you study Islamic bank and conventional, Islamic bank is more compassionate compared to conventional. It's not true at all if we say that Islamic bank charge more than conventional. In case of default, for example, you are charged less. The profit cannot be compounded. In case of moratorium, for example, uh, Islamic bank is different from conventional. You cannot compound the profit. In conventional, you compound the interest for that matter. So a lot of things are changed. They are changed. There are differences between Islamic and, and conventional already. Of course, we fail in that sense to convey to people the beauty of Islamic finance compared to conventional. But it's, it's not fair if we come to Islamic bank asking Islamic bank to do charitable work because they are profit, they are institution that are there to do business with profit. However, what we need to do, as I mentioned many times now already, is that we have to go beyond that. We have to go and talk about other people, you call them unbankable, you call them needy, you call them microfinance people, you can them whatever, but at the end of the day, these people will need to be treated by us. Of course, you cannot ask 70% of them, the banking resources channel to them. Then you are going to have a problem. The cost of fund is there and everything. Of course, it has to be proportionate. Okay? What we call, people call wasatiya whatsoever. So that is the situation that we need to understand, which I think Islamic Bank in the next phase to come, will look into that matter more now. With the Ben Negara looking at the VBI, for example, with Islamic Banking now talking about Islamic social finance, with the Majlis Agama and Pusat Zakat talking about how for us to accelerate the, 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 the collection and the distribution of Zakat, how for us to improve the collection of Zakat. Some Zakat center will, you see, they are, they are, the way they operate is very modern in nature is uh, what we call uh, the, 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 the payment of zakat is on time, uh, real time uh, calculation. You can see every time you put the money, the amount of uh, collection increase, they show very clearly real, on real time basically like Bursa already, for example. So it's all those things coming to the picture. And if we work together, that's the problem with our people. We always believe competition is the best. Okay. I don't deny that competition is good for us to, to, to enhance ourselves. But in certain areas, collaboration and working together is the best. So how for us to see that banks, Islamic banks can sit down together, how to us to create this particular kind of fund, helping the needy, helping those who need, and then talk to Majid Agama on how for us to utilize the wakaf and zakat, how for us to speed up, how for us to show more transparency. The banking is well known for transparency. Well known pro transparency. The regulation is very tight on transparency. How for us to transfer this technology to other segments like Majid Agama and so forth and so on by having all the blockchain, the fintech, whatever you call it. So that can help a lot in terms of propelling the understanding on Islamic social finance and how Islamic banking and finance can be different in terms of putting good things to the people. I believe that what we need to work. Rather than condemning Islamic banking and saying that Islamic banking is no different than conventional, we need to work together to show that it is really different. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, Dr. Azlan. Uh, thank you very much for that, for that message. Uh, we have many questions and we will go for a second round of 
question answer session. Uh, give, easy give easy question to me, difficult question to give to Dr. Azro. <laughs> okay, so we have another question for Dr. Zeti. Uh, many people are protecting their incomes from giving donation. Hence, the idea of social finance is less popular among the masses. This could be due to non-fair income distribution happening. So it's by educating what Islamic social finance and what Allah and the Prophet mentioned are enough to eliminate this fear. And secondly, Dr. Zati, how can Islamic banks manage the risk arising from the use of Islamic social tools, bearing in mind that prior to COVID-19, one of the big reasons why Islamic banks avoid from lending to these unbankable sectors are due to their credit worthiness issues. What has changed the mindset of the bankers? Thank you. Thank you, Ustaz, for this uh, question. I think these two questions, uh, I can uh, address that in one answer, actually, because it is related to each other. The first one is the fear of the people to, uh, I mean, share part of their money, uh, their, their, uh, their hard earned uh, income, particularly in this situation, to other people. Uh, in need, for example. So how to eliminate this fear? So I think uh, we have already talked about this from China perspective, and also we have the concept of barakah. Giving is not uh, decreasing. Uh, giving is actually increasing. Uh, that is the, the, the uh, especially for the Muslim, this is un uh, an understood concept in Islam. But for the non-Muslim also, uh, as we know that the spirit of giving and helping among the Malaysians, irrespective whether they are Muslims or non muslim are very, very, very commendable. I think uh, we have also the universal spirit of, uh, which is close to Barakah just now, what you give, you get back, right? So uh, I think education is all uh, about this, not only for the Muslims, because uh, Islamic banking, uh, Islamic social finance, not uh, exclusively for the Muslims, but including all, uh, all other, other, uh, other than a Muslim as well. Uh, I, I think uh, education and, and explain uh, what we are doing in the Islamic social finance uh, is very important so that people we understand. I said just now be, uh, that we should uh, also enhance and make it a branding of uh, Islamic uh, banking to, to, to do the Islamic social finance in a very structured manner, in a very organized manner, if possible, in a collective effort among all the Islamic banks. Uh, that will be more impactful, I think. And also, if possible, uh, another point is to uh, show the benefit uh, of uh, Islamic social finance in, in terms of the uh, studies do, uh, done, uh, who has already benefited. And also, if possible, it can be reported in the, uh, in the uh, annual report, what we have done, uh, not in the spirit of showing off, but in the spirits of uh, encouraging people. So I think uh, that is a part of education. Uh, when people look into this impact of, which has been done by the some social finance, then people will not be reluctant to uh, uh, depart from part of their uh, income to help others because that is actually in, uh, uh, I mean, a, a spirit of, among all Malaysians, respective of the Muslims or non-Muslims. Uh, in terms of the risk uh, of, on the Islamic bank, again, Islamic finance, uh, Islamic social finance is the answer to this uh, because the fund uh, for the purpose of Islamic social financing, uh, even if, if, we, if we do uh, in the way that uh, very uh, extensive manner that we, we, we said, we explained uh, since morning uh, uh, here in this webinar, we can employ zakat, we can employ wakaf. Uh, we can employ Saraka in a very extensive manner, uh, then we can provide a specific fund to cater for this, not expecting the bank to, uh, to, to, to specify part of the funds in order to provide this. Uh, by having this extended uh, Islamic social finance, Islamic banks can even offer Qadr Hassan basis products, right? And uh, give it more impact to the uh, society and people in need. So I think there is no fear uh, if we understand uh, the, the, the risk and also we understand the benefit that we get uh, from what we are doing. So I think uh, we, we not only do things, but we must also seem to do things. Uh, the impact must be, must be apparent so that people can appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Zeti. Uh, so we have also a question for Dr. Azrul. Uh, we all know that the COVID-19 pandemic has turned back the poverty clock. Islamic financial institutions have put in place social mechanisms to provide relief. In your opinion, Dr. Azrul, 
how effective have we been uplifting the plight of those who have been directly inflicted by the economic impact of this pandemic? And also, what is your opinion on most role to help the poor, especially in current situation? As we know, some of big mosques have a lot of fun. Does bank cooperate with any masjid to help those in need? Dr. Azrul. Thank you, Mr. Kamal. I think to answer the question, uh, we have a lot of initiative taken. Uh, not only, I believe, not only in Bank Islamic, but all Islamic banks uh, throughout the country taken uh, the best actions to make sure that we provide the relief to the people, especially the impacted people, especially the B40s uh, regarding uh, uh, to, to fight the COVID-19. I think uh, we have to mention somehow what, what, what are the initiatives that are taken. For example, I think the, the most important things that the people must remember one of the things that we provide is the moratorium, even though it is compulsory from the regu regulator's point of view, actually the readiness of the institution itself to provide the moratorium is something which is, for me, is very blessing uh, for all of us. Yeah? Because I think the moratorium, uh, giving the moratorium actually is, is, is you, 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 you are giving, uh, you're, you're not taking your right actually, you're giving your right to the others. And then uh, I think this is the measure that 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 they taken by the bank, uh, whether it is effective or not is something else. But since it's automatic and and, and compulsory, so that I think uh, this is the biggest I think uh, the initiative taken by the banks. And also we have to provide the the, the relief. We have the RNR. We we impose non pro uh, non compounding profit. All these are the initiatives that taken by Islamic banks to help. The needy. This is on the business part of the of the bank, but on the other part of it, we do have another initiative. We have the zakat distribution. As far as we're concerned, in my bank Islamic, once we distribute the zakat, we put uh, the the priority to, to the peoples and the, to those impacted by the COVID. Uh, just just sometimes uh, the people doesn't realize or. Uh, we are not uh, doing a so-called promotions on that. So that that keeps uh, the gaps uh, and, 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 and the perceptions toward the financial institutions doesn't help those people. I think uh, uh, talk about the effectiveness and efficiency of it, we, we, we need to look as well. We, we need to improve uh, somehow. Uh, the, the, the questions of efficiency is not stopped here. Whether we are 100% efficient, we cannot stop here. We, we must improve ourselves because we believe there's much more room uh, to improve ourselves in, in terms of managing uh, our initiative uh, to, 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 to fight the, 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 the pandemic. Uh, the second question actually related to the MOS role to help the poor, especially in the current situation. Actually, MOS already taken, I think a lot of MOS uh, MOS in, in, in Malaysia has already taken uh, the good initiative to help the, the, the needs. I think uh, uh, I've once seated as one of the direct uh, board of one mosque in, 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 my, in my, 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 my hometown. And I think the, the, the minds and the mind setting of the, those people uh, that manage the, the mosque actually is different from what we thought. Uh, their, their, their mind, uh, their thought is quite simple, is to have as much as people, our money that we collected, whether through the Jumat prayer or through the donations, a lot of channels that they, 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 they've been used actually for, to, to distribute everything. They don't want to keep even a single sense because they believe in that their mindset, once more we give, the more we will get from it. So uh, the, the distribution actually is quite active. Only then, is there any collaborations between the banks and the mosques? I believe it has, but probably it's quite limited. Uh, maybe some of the banks have the access uh, uh, at the mosque and some, some is not. I think this collaboration should be improved uh, in the future so that uh, we can improve, we can also uh, introduce the new product. And actually once I already, already introduced uh, the, uh, I uh, proposed the concept of Kardul Hassan in the mosque because we have the Khairat Fund, we have the Waqaf Fund in the mosque, in the mosque we have the open uh, fund, but we don't have the Kardul Hassan. How, why, why, how, how well, can, can we implement the Kardul Hassan in the mosque? Actually, it is a viable uh, proposal because we, we are collecting the money as a court from the people and actually we are giving to the people in needs because somehow in the community, there are some people needs the money. Uh, they, they need in money. So rather than go for along, which is the 
not a licensed institutions, actually bank can give, uh, mosque can give also the Qadru Hassan to them and providing a simple uh, conditions not to charge what we call it any interest, that, but to facilitate them because they need in need of cash flow during that particular time. Actually, that is workable from the banks, uh, from the mosque point of view. And then maybe uh, banks can help, uh, financial institutions can help the mosque also to facilitate that how to manage that that, that kind of fund. So uh, I believe a lot of things can be done in the future, whether it is related to COVID or not related to COVID, the functions of the mosque, the functions of finance, the financial institutions should be collaborated, uh, consolidated to make sure that uh, we, we can manage an efficient uh, uh, management for 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 the for the sake of uh, Ummah, uh, for the sake of the Muslim community and for the sake of Malaysians uh, and, and, and all the humankind. Thank you, Sir Kamal. Thank you, Dr. Azro. And we have a last question for Dr. Aznan. Uh, quite a difficult question, uh, unfortunately. Uh, as SC Chairman, what do you think is the biggest challenges that Maybank Islamic have been facing during this current situation, COVID-19 pandemic? And also, uh, you raised some controversial issues, example, example, employer paying zakat to employee, raising zakat to pay off housing debt, the cut funds to be capitalized as a share compliant microfinancing instrument. My question is whether the related legislation or legal statutes have enabled such kinds of solutions to be implemented in Malaysia. Also, what is your experience in discussing this issue with Jabatan Agama or SIRC? Can I skip the questions? <laughs> try, 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 try to be concise. Thank you very much. I make it very fast. Uh, of course, there are a lot of challenges that we have to face, Alhamdulillah, but I believe that uh, at Maybank, uh, I'm not saying that because I'm uh, I'm sitting on Maybank as a Maybank chairman, not to what we call not uh, kipas or not to make people feel proud or whatever, but Alhamdulillah, in, uh, I, what I feel in Maybank is that uh, our initiative, our proposal from committee, uh, from the board of directors, uh, taken very, very well by the management, by senior management, by the stakeholder, by the shareholders. And I don't think we face big problem internally in terms of uh, doing many things in COVID situation. Our main big challenge is that when we try to approach our stakeholders, not shareholders, stakeholders, our depositors, our people outside, for us to get more money, for us to do more, and then where the big challenge is. People always say, Bukan bank ni banyak duit dah ke? Uh, don't you think you have a lot of money already? Why you want to, to still get money from people? People don't understand the under the word collaboration. Don't understand the word working together. I think that's the big challenge that we face. Second, when we want to introduce new things, for example, how for us to how for us to how for us to 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 widen the scope of zakat now nah, that way we have the challenge uh, challenge within ourselves for example i think our our, our committee here uh, Kamal, Tozeti, Dr. Azro, Dr. Nick, we have a big debate on how whether it is a lot for us to use zakat money as qad hasan or not uh, not talking about Qadu Hussein yet. Qadu Hassan only we have a problem already. So a lot of things that we need to 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 that are the time of the challenges. But in terms of putting forward proposal for Maybank Islamic to consider, the board is very helpful. Uh, the senior management, thanks to everybody, were very helpful in terms of our understanding what to do and everything. And most of the time, our I, I don't see any problem in putting our proposal together. The point is that how for us to be able to communicate to the people outside to come and work together with us. That's the first one, uh, the first question. The second question about all the issues that I put just now, uh, this, these issues are very, very new, in fact. I mean, in, in my opinion also that some of the issues come together when COVID happened, then I start to open back all the books and everything, uh, reading back all the zakat. By, by the way, my, my master was not on banking. My master at Cairo University was on zakat. So that was my forte initially, actually. When, when I started my academic uh, areas, it was on zakat. My, 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 my thesis master around 500, 700 pages, 600 pages was on zakat. 
So that was my 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 initial uh, coming through to the Islamic finance actually. So open back all the those writing that I have wrote before, some notes, then go back to the books. There are some areas that which I believe is we use zakat as something uh, to to open our mind. We can help a lot in terms of uh, people in, uh, in to help people in COVID time. Whether these ideas has been uh, debated well or not. It's still very limited, but I believe for the time being, there is no legal provision that talk about that particular area specifically. What contemporary wakaf, yes, there are some state that allow for contemporary wakaf already. However, it's not that well known among the people that in that, that want to proceed. Uh, Perak has provision on uh, temporary wakaf. Uh, Terengganu has provision on temporary wakaf, very good provision, but yet to be really explored and, and exploited in that sense. On zakat, we have to look into our zakat law, our zakat uh, collection, our zakat distribution. For the time being, there is no legal statute for that matter. Uh, Majlis Agama, Pusat Kursa Zakat, they are, in my opinion, again, I'm not here to, to bother anyone. Based on my engagement with all the zakat center, they are very welcoming in terms of discussing this matter. I believe so. Uh, a lot of I, a lot of uh, what I call blame put on them were not true, to be frank. In my opinion, were not true. They are very professional. Of course, shortcomings are there. I think they are open for any suggestion. Don't come and put the blame on anybody. The problem with us, Malaysian, we like to blame rather than helping. So blame first. Then we talk what we can help. Not help first. Blame first. As long as you can blame, you balik rumah, ha, lega. But at the end of the day, nobody benefits from all the blame that we put. But if we come together, try to work together, put our suggestion, try to see what for us to, to, to materialize and institutionalize this, I believe people are very helpful. But for the time being, there is no uh, legal, uh, legal, legal clauses whatsoever to cover many points that I put just now. But it's just about how for us to approach people, make them understand, and, and also to debate further on that. And I believe our people at Majid Agama on Zakat, uh, what we call Zakat Center, they are not very open-minded in terms of discussing. In fact, they are very professional. Some of them got their PhD and everything. Some of them come from a very good academic background. Some of them coming from uh, their, their school, were, they, they come from a very good school before. So I believe that the sigma that, oh, Zakat people are very traditional, Zakat people pandai buka kitab saja, doesn't know how to do, that is all mine already. It's a time for us to work together. The work is working together rather than blaming. Allah Allah. Thank you very much, Dr. Aznan. So, uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention. Our panelists have answered important questions asked during the question and answer session. We shall now have a final round with them. This time, each speaker will take at most five minutes. For Dr. Zeti, Dr. Azrul, and Dr. Aznan, please provide a short concluding remarks as Natija, based on what you have presented earlier, as well as your personal opinion and aspiration on how individuals, community, and Islamic banks can do to help themselves together to go through this pandemic. So we will start with Dr. Zeti. Thank you, Mr. Kama. Uh, so I think uh, we have learned a lot from this session today. Uh, one of it is the uh, how for us to uh, maximize uh, or how to for us to work uh, in a structured manner to maximize the benefit from the Islamic social finance through uh, wakaf, zakat, and sadaqah. Uh, right, uh, I think uh, one word uh, is that uh, I want to conclude is that for everything uh, Allah has given us, there is always a uh, lesson, or there are always silver, silver lining behind. So uh, if not because of COVID-19, I'm, I'm sure that we will not discuss Islam social finance the way we discuss today. Right, thank you very much COVID-19, but uh, please go away quickly. You have done your job. So thank you very much for that. I can put it. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you, Dr. Zati. Uh, and Dr. Azru, please. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, actually, uh, let us change uh, the perceptions. This is the right time, which is to change the mindset and perceptions of the current, uh, the normal situations that we have previously. 
uh, from economic point of view, I think the people always talk about the unlimited ones of people with the limited resources, how to manage that. But I think we must going back uh, to, 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 to the principles of human because these principles actually is not so good because we are creating the greedy peoples uh, because we, 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 are, we are accepting the, the terms of unlimited ones. We, we can do whatever, by all means, we can achieve that what we want. Actually, this is a wrong concept. And we can see that uh, uh, when we talk about the Islamic social finance and uh, with the factor of the COVID-19, I think we can uh, put and change our mind, uh, change our perceptions toward uh, of this uh, mindset. And uh, as, as, as a Muslim, and we believe that we are the Khalifa uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that created us to administer and manage this world properly, not for ourselves, uh, that, but, but to help the people, mutually help the people, and then to take care on the, on the future of the people, the next generations. All of these have been uh, dedicated uh, clearly in the, Holy, in, in the Holy Quran. We can read and we can recite. We can interpret a lot of things that uh, Allah has uh, learned and, 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 and teaches us uh, on this COVID. So, I think that that would be my my conclusion, Sir Kamal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Azul. And finally, we have uh, Dr. Azdan for your final say, please. Thank you, Ustad. Uh, thank you very much, the panelists. Uh, thank you, Ben, for giving us the opportunity. Uh, I've talked several times on this topic in some other webinars, but I think this is the, the, the longest time given for us to express our view. So I'm quite, I'm quite free today. So I just express my view out of uh, what I have in mind without giving some, 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 some research properly on that matter. Perhaps we can put some more research on some of the ideas that I put. Uh, to conclude the discussion, this COVID-19 uh, has affected people in so many ways. You can see not only in terms of economics, health, physical, mental, the rate of suicide, has increased a lot when it comes to this particular time. So it serves us on a lot of things. This is a very extraordinary event. And people always say extraordinary event requires extraordinary measures. Uh, extraordinary event requires extraordinary measures. So um, we have to be creative. We have to be innovative in putting solution to this particular pandemic. Not only we are innovative when we put the product of Islamic banking and finance, but also we have to be creative and innovative in putting forward instrument that can help uh, people uh, to, to go through, to sail through this particular pandemic. I think uh, these extraordinary measures require extraordinary mind as well, requires for us to think in a bigger manner how for us to dig, if you talk about Islamic finance, for example, how for us to be able to dig the classical book of the Judas, to take up from that the gist of what they have put to their time. Remember, Islamic finance is not new. Islamic Muamalat is old already. During the time, you see a lot of experiences that they have. We have how many schools of law in Islamic finance? So all those schools definitely put some of their thought in some of the things that happened during that time. We, our responsibility is to dig and to understand the rationale, to understand how they, how they think, to understand how they put the solution and how for us to ensure that in this particular pandemic and big, difficult situation, the work people can come together, the bankers, the practitioners, the regulators, uh, majlis agama, scholars, uh, everybody has, can come together how for us to work together in putting the right solution, the right innovative thinking for us to put to the people, for us to put to regulators, for us to put to the banks, for them to be able to help people during this particular extraordinary event to sail through the difficulties that we are facing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease our life and, and take away from us this particular pandemic in the nearest future. And, and Allah give, give us back the, the, the life in which we can go back to work as usual and, and, and we can do our life as usual again. Thank you very much, uh, Ustaz. Thank you very much, panelists, Cik Shah, Mebang. Uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And amin, amin to the dua. And thank you very much for the dua, Dr. Aznan. And thank you to all our distinguished panels for sharing your thoughts on this pandemic. I agree with all of them in these current tough times. 
human can no longer keep their selfish traits. We need to stay united and recognize that the global resources in this world is limited. With so Islamic social finance, science and technology, we can ensure our survival of everybody, including the poor. As long as we recognize our primordial state as Khalifa of this earth, it is possible to sustain everybody socially, economically, and protect the environment. With that, I would like to extend my utmost appreciation uh, to our panelists, Dr. Aznan, Dr. Zati, and Dr. Azrul. And I will end this forum and pass over to the MC of this webinar, Sister Siti, Siti Saleha. And before I end, I would like to share another pantun, which sound, Bunga Melo Terhias Indah. Haruman semerbak dapat dirasa. Tirai webinar di Labu sudah. Terima kasih. Jumpa lagi di lain masa. So, wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, Sister Saleha, back to you please. Thank you. Alhamdulillah, Shukur. Such a very lovely pantun, Ustaz. Uh, thank you very much to the moderator and the panelists for the insightful webinar. Indeed, it was a very, very interactive session. And sorry, due to the time constraint, the remaining question will be attended separately accordingly. SubhanAllah, time flies so fast. We now have come to the end of this webinar for today. Ladies and gentlemen, before you log out, appreciate that you could kindly provide your feedback via the QR code, which, which will be appearing on your skin shortly. But before that, appreciate that the moderator panelist Jitsha to stay on for a few seconds for us to take a virtual photo group, please. Okay, smile. Okay, one more. Alhamdulillah, thank you very much. All right, with that, thank you very much to all for your attendance. Stay safe and have a pleasant weekend ahead. Wabillahi taufiq wa hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you.